Okay, I think we should be live. Uh, please let me know in chat. As soon as you can see us and hear us, we should be good on audio and video and stuff like that, but let me know. Uh, so I'm still waiting for the video to pop up on my end. Hopefully it's going through. If it is, we are going to be doing a live overclock. There, it looks like it's going now. We're going to be doing a live overclock of the Titan V and the 7980XE. The goal here is to beat Linus's score or his team's score. They recently just, they did that Singularity PC, I think. And they had, I don't even know, I think it was a Titan V 128 gig of RAM, 7980XE. And basically they passed our rank on the 3D Mark Hall of Fame, which is not okay. So we're gonna take that back. Uh, I actually, I think, let me check on their score right now, let you know where they are and what we're trying to hit. Previously, I was using Hardware Bot and they were using, uh, they were just using the Time Spy Extreme Hall of Fame that's built in with Future Mark. So let's see what Linus and team got. And they did, by the way, they did a great job. This is just like a friendly media battle, basically. It's a little fun for everyone. Uh, Linus got uh, a, we can actually, we can show this screen for a second. I'll full screen that. Are you able to see from that angle? So I don't know if you guys can see from that angle, but Linus got a 8092 for his score. This is Time Spy Extreme. And we are down at 11th place. We ran this test last when the Titan V was closer to launch, was newer. So I think we can take that. We can definitely get up close to it. We're going to be fighting over like single digit points towards the end. But let's look at their score. And... So they did 7731 GPU and 11,000 CPU, and uh, that's what we're going to try and beat today. So that's, that's what we're shooting for. I'm going to check chat, make sure everything looks good. And then we can start doing some overclocking. Uh, by the way, we're a bit late because uh, I tripped the breaker. So <laughs> we're overclocking. And... Um, and tri tripped the breaker because we had the streaming PC, which is below this desk, running on the same circuit and it's Threadripper machine as the benchmark machine. And the benchmark machine was only doing like a thousand watts. And the, uh, the streaming one was doing a couple hundred watts. The lights are doing some wattage. So we tripped the breaker, sorry. But we're here now. I actually have the streaming PC hooked up to an extension cable that's running into the bathroom. Uh, so that pretty much solved our problems. Uh, and we are not overclocking vacuums today, I'm sorry. All right, so uh, here's what we're gonna do first, I guess. We can go over the bench. I'll show you what's, what's in it for as best as I can anyway. Um, let me try and scoop by. Do you want this light pointed at the bench? Okay, so this is really not meant to be filmed, but we're gonna try. Yeah, so bench, I'll just point it out from off camera, I guess. Uh, careful. <laughs> Camera's going handheld. All right, so this is kind of crazy right now. Basically, we have an EK water block set up on the Titan V, and hopefully everything's good because I can't really see chat from here. So uh, this, they just sent me all this stuff. I don't even have the stickers peeled off. EK pump and reservoir going into the Titan V uh, and then into a 360 radiator on which I have mounted a, uh, let's, I don't even know, it's all kinds of fans. We have a Sunon Maglev fan here. We have a Vardar fan here. We have a Corsair Maglev fan here. Same thing, basically a little slower. This one's only at 80%, so we have some headroom there. Over on this one, obviously fans aren't at max speed right now. Uh, Maglev, Maglev, non-LED Maglev, and those are on a 360 thermal take flow radiator which is going to the CPU. So there's separate loops, one's an AI, one's a CLC and one's an open loop basically. And that more or less covers up us. The um, VRM is being cooled by the two EVGA fans on the X299 Dark. For the memory, we have Trident Z. Uh, it is 3600 megahertz, I think CL, I don't know, 18 or something, I can't remember. But that's G-Skill memory, 7980XE, uh, X299 Dark. We have a Noctua NFA14 right here that's just blowing down to make sure the VRMs are cooled 
in case anything's got loose contact. And I think that covers most of it, except the power supply. Power supply is a Corsair AX1600i, and uh, it's one of the best power supplies you can get right now. So AX1600i for that. And this is also why we tripped the breaker earlier, but uh, that was my fault. So, okay, hopefully chat's good. Uh, we're gonna remount the camera, give it a second. So hopefully the pump was pulled from a Dyson. <laughs> Uh, no, it'd be much better. All right, so that's uh, that's all the basics. Hopefully enough people are in here now to get started. But if you have questions about the setup, spam chat. Someone will let you know or I'll see it at some point. And uh, I'm just waiting for Andrew to finalize the lighting setup and we'll be good to go. But uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna be testing. So what CPU is he using? I just said it. I just said what CPU we're using. It's a 3980XE. Um, so yeah, uh, basically, yeah, one quick thing before this, I was talking with Buildzoid, and we were talking about how people, people like me, people like Linus, we really have no business being on the top of any Hall of Fame thing, because we're not like the pro overclockers. Uh, the thing is that now, because there are no price divisions with hardware bot, you can more or less buy your way to the top. Now, there's still some overclocking skill involved, obviously. We still have to out-overclock Linus, but we're not gonna out-overclock someone like Kingpin or, or Debauer or Buildzoid. So it, it's a bit weird that you can buy your way up. I hope Hardware Bot introduces price class divisions in the future, but uh, for now it benefits us. So I guess that's fine. Um, okay, so let's take a look at the system. We're just gonna film the screen for today because we had enough technical issues uh, with, with other things, but yeah, that's, that's fine. So, all right, right now I have no CPU overclock applied. We're on stock settings for everything, stock GPU. I have actually shorted the shunts on the GPU, so we're a bit ahead uh, of where we would be typically. So I've shorted the shunts. Let's just let this run and see what kind of score complete baseline gets. That way everyone can appreciate the climb to the top as it goes. But uh, yeah, so the, short, the, sh the shorts are shunted. The shunts are shorted. Uh, there are three of them on the Titan V that you need to short, and we have a video on that in the past, but um, basically, uh, I've got liquid metal on three of them. It's Thermal Grizzly, Conductonaut. I have enough on there. Uh, the more you put on, the more you'll, you'll short them out. You can hit a point where it doesn't really do any, or do, it actually breaks your clocks. Uh, so we've done a moderate amount. I know there was a Lewis Rossman video recently on like, don't short your video card shunts. The thing is, uh, shorting shunts is, there's a few things about it. Um, first of all, we don't know what his customer did. They, if you put too much on and it spills over, it can eat the solder around the outside of the shunt. So don't flood it with liquid metal. Uh, secondly, for what we're doing, it's for benchmarking. I mean, it's gonna be for however long the stream is and then we'll wipe it out. So. Um, it's fine for the kind of things we're doing here, but uh, I still wouldn't necessarily recommend it for daily because you're only getting a couple percent performance uplift, which is what we want for competitive benchmarking, especially versus Linus, who has a lot more money than we do and can solve the problem by throwing more money at it. But um, for daily usage, I, I wouldn't really recommend it. Uh, that said, there's been some discussion by Darebauer on liquid metal and uh, shorting shunts. And I believe the last time he talked about it, he didn't see any, any, uh, any of the solder chewed away with a responsible amount applied. So I don't know. Anyway, wanted to address that because I know people have seen the Lewis Rossman video. He's got great points. However, there are also reasons to short the shunts. Uh, so we, we disagree a bit there, but he's also not coming at it from an enthusiast perspective. So he's got a completely different take on it. We're in graphics test two now. We still have CPU test to go. This is complete baseline right now, everyone. We are establishing, okay. Uh, you can short it with a piece of, I of wire and a soldering iron. Uh, the problem with doing stuff like that, you basically need a really long wire because uh, it, if you apply too much liquid metal, or in this case, too short of a line, you'll end up with uh, broken clocks. It'll basically go into 2D clocks, like, I don't know, 156 megahertz or something, because NVIDIA has sensors on the GPUs that will see the resistances way off 
and it'll freak out and brick itself until I think you can fix it just by removing the wire or the liquid metal. But um, yeah, actually I'm pretty sure you can because if you do too much liquid metal, it'll do the same thing. So there's a reason you do liquid metal unless you're gonna run like a really long wire or something. What's, okay, we got our first super chat. Sean says, what CPU are you using? Kappa, ha 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 ha. Laugh all you want, but if you're giving me two bucks to say 7980XE, I'll take it. That's what we're using. Currently under stock settings. Thank you for the donation, I appreciate it. Uh, and uh, what else do we have here? So yeah, first run's going. Let's see if there's anything really interesting. I can talk about some of the setup, I guess. Uh, during setup for this, other than tripping the breaker and setting us back 30 minutes, we also had some issues where I wasn't sure that the block was making full coverage, like actual contact with the VRM components. So uh, took it all apart while it was hooked up to liquid. So basically like holding the block over here and reapplying thermal pads and thermal paste and everything to the GPU. Seems okay now. I hope it's making contact. EK recommends one, uh, one millimeter thickness pads, but we, um, yeah, we're using one millimeter, so it seems okay. And next one, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. Mate, Mate says you can solder a resistor there then. Yes, you could actually solder another shunt resistor on top of the shunt resistor and basically piggyback them. We're not doing that. I want to be able to restore this to basically stock settings after we're done. It's way easier for me to spend 30 seconds putting liquid metal on it and then clean it off later. But you're absolutely right. You could put multiple shunt resistors on there and it'd probably work a bit better. Uh, thank you for the donation. So, okay, I think we're almost done with the first run. We can check what the CPU or what the uh, score is for complete baseline. Then I'm gonna tell you what Linus got so we know what we're trying to beat. <laughs> this is the new meme. R R4 says, uh, gave $2, said, say 7980XE. No, <laughs> no, I will not say 7980XE. $5 from Jack who says, if you screw up, I will be very disappointed. You are not alone. Thank you. Uh, okay, so next one, or uh, here's our first, first baseline score, no overclock. Just to give everyone some perspective, if you ran it out of box, the out of the box score is 77, 7074 times by extreme. For reference, Graphics here is 6,900 and CPU is 7,800. So uh, while you're looking at that score, I'm gonna read you what Linus got again, just so we know what we're shooting for. Linus is currently ranked sixth, and I, sh I suppose Alex on his team ranked sixth in the 3D Mark Hall of Fame. They did not submit to HardwareBot, I don't think. And they have 8092 for their score. So our baseline without any overclocks uh, needs a thousand points to get up to theirs and they got 7731 on graphics so that one needs to be 800 higher to match theirs or so uh, they got 11,000 on CPU so we have the most work to do on CPU and we can start with that uh, I guess let me take two or three more of these super chats before I move on uh, Bazinga X where is the cat you need the cat we don't want snowflake anywhere near this machine right now <laughs> she uh, She'll knock things over, knock the fans over. Christopher says, are you in the Intel Extreme rig challenge? No, we are not. I'm actually not familiar with what they're doing with that. I, I've seen the name. I don't know what it is this year. And finally, uh, Brooke, $2. Is that a Dyson power supply? No, I don't think Dyson will ever want to talk to us. Uh, so it is in fact not a Dyson power supply. So I think we had 7,000 something for our starting score. And we're just gonna do some We'll start slow with the overclocks and see what all needs to be done. Uh, get some perspective on everything. I'm fairly confident we can get up to Linus's score, but uh, we'll see. One thing I should note, last time we did this stream with uh, an X299 dark motherboard, I didn't know it, but, well, actually, it didn't even matter. We were using two sticks of memory, and um, it, that was intentional. We just didn't have more, but... Uh, it's gonna get loud for a second while I ramp these fans up. So yeah, we had two sticks of memory and that actually quad channel matters a lot more than I thought for, uh, for Time Spy Extreme. Time Spy Extreme is crazy memory hungry actually. I think we leave that one alone. One of these, oh, a Sys2 fan we want at 80. 
one of these is going to be super loud. So hopefully I got that okay. Uh, yeah, so last time we were on half memory channels is this time. That alone is going to change our scoring a lot. I think we're actually already pretty close to our score with an overclock last time. Let's just start with XMP and then go from there. Uh, overclock, let's start with a very simple one. Let's just do 45. I'm confident we can do 48. And then we can see if we can push it past there. And uh, we'll start with some... Basic voltage settings. I'm going to put in what I know our close to end values will be. 1.35 is not necessary for 45x. I need to turn off AVX. And let's set mesh ratio to 32. So AVX off, mesh radio, ratio 32. That's higher than last time. We have four channels this time, thanks to the Trident Z kit that's in there right now. So that'll be a big help. Currently only at 45x for the multiplier and uh, let me check. Apparently we get a bunch of super chats or something. Uh, God, why are there so many of these? Um, May it says do a vacuum cleaner instead of fans OC challenge. It wouldn't be fair. We would be barred from hardware bot for cheating like that. Thomas uh, says good luck. Thank you. We will probably not need it, but thank you anyway. Uh, Venris says I respect you guys. You don't have to say a word. <laughs> okay. Uh, the SLS AMG, what are the out of the box thermals? They're actually not bad. We were in the 80s. We had plenty of headroom when this was actually overclocked. And play Minecraft and test out of the box thermals. No. Okay. All right. There's a bunch more. I'll get to them in a moment. Um, all right. So we're just going to set 1.35 for now for V Corp, V Mesh. Let's do 1.35. Uh, VSA 1.35. Let's try 1.2. If it's not stable, I'll go up to 1.25 or something. 1.2 for VCCIO. Uncore voltage offset. I want 500 millivolt offset. I think that's going to be most of our settings. We'll mess with these a bit more later too, but that's plenty for baseline. It's more voltage than we need, uh, which is fine because I don't want to spend the whole stream crashing and blue screen, <laughs> things like that. All right. And we're just going to do XMP and see if it's stable. And I think we should be good. So let's start there, and then we'll we'll pick it up after that. Uh, okay, so I'll read some some more of these while it's restarting, and then I'll do the rest. Apparently, it's unhappy with something. Then I'll do the rest while it's uh, running the 3D Mark tests. Once we see if it even boots. So many super chats, though. Thank you. Uh, I didn't get it. Which CPU was it, Bjorn? We've been over this. Come on, man. 7980XE. Uh, okay, it's not happy with something. Uh, let's see, where is the cat? <clears throat> the cat is not allowed in this room when there are seven fans sitting on top of the bench. Uh, right now we're just kind of rebooting. <clears throat> People, 8502, $5 if you give everyone a high five. High five. I, you, he's gonna give me $5 if I give everyone a high five. Thank you. All right, it's still rebooting. It's a, uh, I'm gonna have to safety boot or something. Just tuned in, how's it going? We ran a baseline, applied a really simple overclock and uh, need to change some settings. Basically is where we are right now. Is it booting this time or no? Okay, we're gonna clear CMOS. And boot, please. Come on. Okay. Once it's done having a fit, <laughs> just gonna flip the power. There we go. Okay, hopefully that cleared CMOS. Next ones. <clears throat> so many. All right, you're still getting back into BIOS right now. Uh, go forth, Steve White, my fellow Canadian off that position. <laughs> Sorry, Linus, nothing personal. A. Hey. Sign ModMat before you ship it. Uh, we have a signed ModMat option on there. Let's see. Speaking of, those are coming in. Um, come on, let's get into BIOS, please. I think those will be here uh, within the next 10 days or so. They get to us, and then we will ship it out to anyone who ordered them at that point. The ModMat's like the one I'm working on here. We've made some changes to them. Um, okay, there we go, finally. Finally. 
So, uh, I think what tripped this, let me get a better angle of this. Your angle's still okay on that? So let's just make sure it wasn't the, uh, the memory. And then CPU multiplier per core, let's do a 45. Zero AVX, 32 mesh, not zero mesh, 32 mesh, zero, zero. 100 BCLK, extreme voltage mode, 1.95. V core, 1.35 is way more than enough, but that's fine. V mesh, 35. VSA, let's try 1.225, 1.2 for IO, Uncore 500. Okay, so let's start there. Hardware monitor, we're just gonna blast these. And I'll figure out which one's too loud later. Okay, all right. What else, what needs to be done? Memory, we can, there's a lot of memory tuning we can do later and we will do later. But for now, we'll stick with this stuff and I'll walk you through it once we can actually just get this thing to boot. UFI needs to be legacy. Okay. All right, so let me just double check myself here. 500, 1 1.2, 1 1.25, 1.35, 1.35, yes, 1 1.95, 4500, 32. Okay, let's, let's see if it boots this time. If not, I might need to train it or something. All right, so that's gonna boot. Why is it beeping at me? There's so many super chats. I am going to read through most of these as we uh, get the benchmark running. Right now I need to get the machine up and when Time Spy is running, we'll read through a lot of those. Jay is on the list at number 24. Yeah, Jay, I think did his video with, um, with Kanepin, right? That was pretty good one. They flew Kanepin out to Jay's studio and set it all up. And I think he used Dellon too, if I remember correctly. Considering a Titan V, like I said, basically buys your way to the top. That's pretty good. Just got to get back into BIOS. How's my X5660 going to compare? <laughs> you should be cranking Dream Theater in the background while we wait. Yeah, that's a great way to get demonetized instantly. It's unfortunate. I totally get it, though. Come on. Let's go, EVGA. Let's get into BIOS. <laughs> okay. There we go. So let's just make absolutely certain everything is where it should be. Restore defaults. Let's do a, actually, that should be fine. Per core, 44. Let's do that. 0, 0, 32. Don't really need this yet, but whatever. 1.5. 1. 1.5. 1. Now, there's going to be some. Let's do 1.27. Should be fine for this. Uh, there's going to be some annoying fan noise when I am um, not talking too loud. Sorry about that. There's not a lot we can do about it. We've tried. Oh, this. I need to disable this. I missed that. BSA 1.225, sure. 1.2. Okay, if this doesn't go like I want this time, then we'll load a profile and see if that'll boot. Do we have all memory channels? Yes. There are options. Okay, XMP1. Is this all auto? Yes. Okay. Mess with that later. Legacy. And fans, I guess. Although we don't really need them like crazy right now. Okay. Hopefully this boots this time. Save profile, Steve Basic. All right. Okay, let's hope that boots. Make it easier. 
All right, lots of these things. So it's morphin time, says it's Steve time to kick Linus friendly ass. <laughs> that is the that is the kindest way to say that. Uh, I love everything about this hashtag BLTT. What CPU is that? It's the seven. It's the it's the seventy nine eighty XE. Uh, you know, Lion's going to throw more money at it. Uh, Kevin says you could watch LTT video on the Intel channel. I could. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't know anything about it right now. Sounds like it's booting this time. That's good. Tom's says, what GPU are you using? Greetings from Norway. We are using a Titan V that currently has a shorted shunt mod on it and an EK water block. It's, I think it might be, I don't think it's the first. I think maybe the second water block for a Titan V. Either way, EK sent that over with a 360 uh, so that we could do this. And seems to be working pretty well. Like I said, I'm about 80% confident on the contact with the VRMs, but I think we're good. Uh, okay, so we did boot. Now, just, just to remind everyone, we established a baseline of about 7,000 points when no overclocking anything was applied. I think we're at 4.4, 4.5 gigahertz. I think 4.4 is what I set it to for right now. Nothing with memory yet. And we're just going to run this and, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm also going to get hardware info going and then we'll just check the temperatures after, which should be absolutely fine. It's not really overclocked right now. Okay. So we'll check that after if it completes successfully and let's let that go. All right. So I'm going to read some chat stuff while that's running. Uh, oh yeah. So just to catch everyone up, there's a lot of new people here. Baseline score, zero overclock at all on anything, was about 7,000 points. Uh, Linus's score is 8092, so we need to gain 1,000 points. Uh, his CPU score is 11,000, his GPU is 7,700. Last time, my CPU score was limited to under, I think, 8,000 points. This is Time Spy Extreme I'm talking. And a lot of that limitation, we didn't know until later, was because of the uh, the memory how memory intensive time spy extreme is it's actually super memory intensive so having quad channel boosted us instantly by a lot uh, when i ran some preliminary tests so that's what we're shooting for a test is running it looks somewhat successfully at least why not ln2 i mean because the setup required and i think they were on water, so we're going to run water and see what we can do. It's, it's just a bit of fun anyway. Uh, I have not, I've technically done LN2 overclocking, but it was under the guidance of one Mr. Dare Bauer. Uh, and you should check him out, or Buildzoid also, if you haven't seen them. What's, sorry, what CPU? Uh, people 8502 as promised. Thank you for the donation. Hayden, Steve, you're the man. Congratulations in advance. It's very confident of you. Thank you. Still running the benchmark, by the way. Uh, Cody says, going to overclock your mom for $2. Okay. Uh, Mark and Puff, did you ever get your hair caught in a fan? That's a great question. While we were messing around with, the, with putting the block back on the Titan V, I was genuinely worried about that. Um, or actually, when we were moving this monitor over here, too. Yeah, it's six really high RPM fans. One of them spins at 3,500 RPM. And we have a, uh, a, what are those, what are these called? Softbox, I guess. We have a softbox kind of, that's a little flimsier on one of the lights and it was getting sucked into the fans on, until we added some tape to the bottom. So yeah, they are they're genuinely dangerous. But no, no, I have not. Uh, where is GNHQ on the East Coast? From Nicholas, thank you. Lord Dryer says, hey, once you get Ryzen 2 chips, can you please do a four and six threaded bench? I'm curious about how Boost 2.0 works out in those workloads. We can look into it. Uh, any comment on Dare Bauer's new video, Gamers Nexus? I don't even know what it is. Let's, we're still running the benchmark. Let me see what this video is you're talking about. Aqua Exhaler, is that it? Is that what you're talking about? Is that the liquid he showed at Gamescom or something? If it is, um, if it is, I, I mean, I think it's cool. I don't, I haven't seen his new video though. <laughs> All right, so next one. Will it break the 10 teraflop barrier? No, only one card can do that. Under the guidance of one man, that was the real bot crusher. Thank you. 
Uh, one test left, CPU test, and then we'll have a second baseline to show you. Uh, Piper Willow, I'm back to let everyone know that they lost the game once again. Sorry, just the messenger. Uh, <laughs> Thomas, cue up the good work, mate. Thank you. Please say, I'm quoting, I'm quoting here. This is just a quote. Uh, EBF says, please say 8700K is best. I'm just reading a quote. David Stahl, geez, $70, thank you. More funds for the bucket. I guess that'd be the ice bucket for our next overclock because we'll probably need to chill the thing if Linus retaliates. <laughs> so, or might need to go further than that. Invest in a plane ticket for Buildzoid or something. All right, let's see what the, uh, the score is for our second baseline. <clears throat> Overclocking by proxy in that instance. Uh, how does my X5660 compare to this? Not too well. Okay, it's almost done. Buying a 1080 Ti tomorrow. FE is pretty cheap. Should I get something else or will I be fine with water cooling? Water cooling is great. There's no problem with water cooling at all. I mean, it is, it is overkill, I guess, in a lot of cases, but, um, but, but that's okay. All right, so for reference, our temperatures were like 70 degrees on the CPU. Uh, 7367 is what that simple overclock got us. So we've got another 800 points to go. Uh, graphics score 7,000, they're at 7,700. CPU score 10,415, they're at 11,009. So let's, let's beat that one first, and then we'll play around with the GPU after that. And uh, like I said, they're at 11,009. I think that was 10,400. Previously, we were in the, uh, I want to say, 7, 8,000 range because we're running dual channel. So we should be good there. I would love to see an LN2 over Kluke live. Yeah, so uh, we don't presently do that. Certainly something I've considered, but I will plug Buildzoid again. He does great work. If you're not familiar with him, go check out actually Hardcore over Overclock in his channel. He does stuff with liquid nitrogen all the time. Uh, okay, and I think he's in chat to me. So let's, let's just do core first. Save everyone a bit of time, I guess. And hopefully. Let's push that 1.35, okay. Is everything else, okay, yes, all right. So we're just going up to 4.7 right now. Nothing with memory yet, that'll come probably last. Just see if this freaks out again. So uh, I think we were at 7074 for absolute baseline, 7300 for the next baseline, which is 4.4 gigahertz, no GPU overclock, uh, no actual serious CPU overclock. Okay, it's booting, good. And now we're gonna see what a simple 4.7 gets us. And then we'll push to 4.8, which is probably close to where this chip tops out. I think it might be able to do 4.9 on at least some cores. Our cooling's a lot better than last time. Uh, we've got, so the CPU is delitted, 7980XE, that's the new meme, if anyone's asked since last time. It's delitted. I'm using um, Thermal Grizzly Conductonaut between the die and the IHS. And I'm using Cryonaut on top of it, which is high thermal conductivity paste. And then um, we've got a thermal take flow, which is just a, I just basically, my reasoning for that was I want a 360 radiator, I want a fast pump, I don't want to build a loop. So uh, the flow uses a 4.5 gen pump, which is faster. And we hooked that up with two Maglev Pros and one Maglev Not Pro fan. And that seems to be going pretty well. Okay, so hardware info open just for maximum temperatures. So we're currently, what did I say, 800 points behind them, I think. Got a bit of ground to gain. Shouldn't be too big of a deal. I don't know, does anyone know what clocks they were at? Because I'm actually, I didn't pay too close attention to what they were benchmarking on. All right, so set that to run and uh, this is just a Time Spy Extreme benchmark. Again, we're on 4.7 right now. And uh, someone posted in chat what um, what Linus is running, because I'm not sure, actually. Someone says, Cool Laboratory Liquid Ultra versus Conductonaut. I've done that test. I've done a lot of those tests with liquid metal, and it tends to be a difference of about one degree Celsius, uh, which is often within margin of error. 
So, um, yeah, there's not a, honestly, the liquid metals, once you get that far down, there's not a huge difference between them. I think the biggest difference is how they react with different metals. And I don't know too much about that. Uh, but I can tell you about the performance and it's basically equal. Next one. After this, could you overclock a washing machine? No, no, I don't think I can. I don't know where to start with that. Thoughts on liquid metal on a GPU uh, and, and people who keep saying liquid metal dry out after a year. So, okay, a couple of things here. Um, liquid metal on a GPU is not really worth it. The risk is a bit higher, especially on a Titan V, your risk is considerably higher. Uh, there are a lot of small SMDs, service mount devices, surrounding the core of the Titan V. And if you have any spillover and it gets on those, you can short it. Uh, best case scenario, it doesn't boot. Worst case scenario, you damage or destroy a $3,000 card. Additionally, the, uh, well, I don't know about the Titan V. Titan V is a bit bigger and it's more, it's a bit hotter. But typically with GPUs, the direct die contact that already exists between the cooler and the die is, is sufficient enough that liquid metal is not going to get you much more. Uh, it's not like a CPU where you've got with Intel and uh, the APUs, I guess, you've got a layer of silicone adhesive that's somewhat thick and you have a layer of thermal paste that's somewhat thick. And those two things together, although the thermal paste isn't bad from a, an endurance standpoint, those two things together mean that uh, liquid metal does a lot for you on the CPU side because you're bringing the IHS down closer to the substrate and closer to the die and uh, you're obviously improving the thermal interface with something that has many times higher thermal conductivity. So hopefully that kind of answers that. Oh, your other question, uh, liquid metal drying out after a year. Uh, we've talked to a lot of people about that. We've done some testing. Some of it's still in progress and will be for a while. But I can tell you that at least one year on with conduct or not, we've been good on all the stuff we've delitted in the past year. Uh, and I think most of our systems that are currently running with it are at about the 10 month marker. No signs of degradation yet. I haven't tried other liquid metals. I don't know how conduct or not fares past the one year mark. I've asked, uh, obviously biased, but the people at Thermal Grizzly, what their expectations are. The company suggested that uh, it should be good for at least two years, but I haven't validated that because that takes time. So that was a long, long time on that one, but we are still running the benchmark. We're on CPU test. That's the last one for this. Love your content. Good luck today from Bill Wanchalo. Thank you. Nightcore Fusion. Oh, I got your question. Uh, I'm getting behind on these guys. Uh, okay. Draxel Gaming. Will you do benchmarks for Spectre and Meltdown? Actually, I do want to do that. I've done a lot of research on it. I've spoken with Intel on what their expectations are. I've spoken with researchers on their expectations. I think right now we're, we're just going to wait for a little bit. Two reasons. One, uh, some upcoming travel. But two, Intel keeps pushing these updates. And I don't want to find myself in a scenario where I'm finishing all the benchmarks and then another one comes out. So we're just going to give it a week or two to cool down and see if, if this is kind of it, if they stop iterating. Because I, I don't want to. And that's a huge time investment, like multiple generations of CPUs. So we're just going to wait and see when they're kind of done for now. Is that a Q6600? <laughs> no, no, it's not. 7980XE. Thank you. Psychnosis. Uh, at this point, I'm starting to think Intel's just throwing a dollar at us to make us say that over and over. You're all, you're all a bunch of shills. That's what you are. See how it feels. Turn, turn the tides on you. All right, next test score is coming in. And what are we at? 7,400. Okay. So at this point, we need to play around with memory and GPU. Uh, CPU score, we're at 10,972. Previously, we were at 10 or something, 10,400. 10, we're almost at 11,000 now. Uh, Linus is at 11,009. So we're more or less on par with him there. Let's finalize the CPU overclock and then start playing around with the GPU. And uh, that, should, that should get us up to where they are in the least, if not past it. So uh, pretty good start though, 10,900, way beyond what we were last time, largely thanks to Quad Channel. Auto Fragger 2, Tech Jesus, you're my hero. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that. I appreciate the super chat. It is helpful. Uh, okay, so let's push that to 48. 
So we're at 4.8 gigahertz in theory. Hopefully this voltage is fine. If it's not, I'll push it up a bit. We have the thermal headroom to do so. I think we're in the 80s or something. So we've got some room. Uh, CPUs don't really care about thermals, unlike GPUs up until they're TJ Maxx. So until we're hitting like 100 degrees, we're fine. Uh, okay, the rest of these all look okay for now. So 48 there, let's start doing some memory stuff. 1.85 for voltage. I'll leave those at 16 for now. Set that to 28, see if that works. Uh, what else can we do? We got a couple things we can do here. This, I want this to be auto. EVGA, if you're watching, or if you watch later, I here's what I want. I want to be able to type in the letter A and make this say auto. Uh, and I don't, does zero work if I do that? Does zero bring me, zero brings me to auto. Okay, well, I still want to be able to type A. Uh, okay, command rate one. Let's go down here. 2727, so we're maxing out TREFI. We're gonna bring down TRFC to 300. Uh, TWR, I wanna bring down to 16. I was talking to Buildzoid about this, again, of actually hardcore overclocking. Time Spy Extreme takes so much memory, I'm not sure we're gonna be able to max mem enough to get it stable. Maybe later, maybe after everything else, we can come back to that. Six. Uh, six for... RWDR, six for RWDD, six for RWSR. Okay, I think we can probably start there. Yeah, 1.85 volts for memory, should be fine. Oh, frequency, missing the frequency. Let's go up to 4,000. This kit, uh, the G-Skill kit's rated for 3,600. I think it's like, I don't know, I guess it's CL16. Thought it was CL18, but um, anything else I wanna do here? I think there is, yes. Let's bring that to six, okay. All right, let's try this. Uh, actually, we should save a new one. Steve basic two, all right. Okay, so we're pushing for 4.8 gigahertz now. 4,000 megahertz memory, hopefully. Let's see if it makes a post beep or not. I'm just listening for post. So give me one second, guys. <clears throat> no. Okay, sounds like it booted. All right. Fun fact, EVGA's motherboards boot, uh, beep once for every USB device plugged in on boot. So if you want it to make an orchestra of noise, you can plug in like 10 USB devices and it'll keep beeping forever. Okay, so that's booting at 4.8. Uh, Matteo, I think, voucher, $10 Canadian. Thank you very much for the super chat. Put this towards using MORA3 Pro next time. I'm actually not familiar with that. Interesting. This looks, okay. Okay, uh, you have alerted me to it. I will look into it for next time. Thank you for the heads up. Uh, uh, the rest of the message says it will lower delta T ambient over fluid and can be easily put away from the set. Sounds good to me. So we'll try that. We'll try that next time, maybe. Thank you for the heads up. Uh, there's an impossible amount of hardware to keep up with, obviously. So I do appreciate when you all let me know about something that I might not know about, because then we can look into buying it and running some tests. Okay, so 4.8. Uh, I'll drag this over here after we'll look at temperatures and let's just run time spy extreme actually let's let's kind of save some time and just do the CPU so that's the only thing I've changed right now and we'll do windowed mode as well not going to get a total score and our score will be a bit lower on the CPU uh, strictly because it's the hardware info is running but that's not going to matter all that much so okay that'll give us that'll let us know if it's stable or not and then from there we can go further Nicholas says Try, I feel like you're making me say something bad, but it's not in English, so YouTube won't care. Try and say, hang on, let me translate this first. <laughs> Translate.google.com. That doesn't look that bad, if that's, if that's actually what it means. I have the volume off on this machine. Uh, road, growed, med, flowed. <laughs> 
red porridge with cream, apparently? Danish? I don't know. Okay, I said it. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, any comments to actually Hardcore OC's new video? I'm sorry, I, I don't, I don't, like, I don't know what they all are. On a, I, I have to go check. Uh, what'd you do, Buildzoid? What'd you do today? OC Adventures, reference HD5870. That sounds fun. RAM bandwidth versus frequency and timing sounds good also. Uh, that was from Lure Dryer. Next one is Mickelty says, after this, could you... Oh, we got that one, overclock washing machine. Thoughts on liquid metal, got that one. Uh, what CPU are you running? 7980XE. <laughs> uh, right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think... But if people keep doing super chat, just <laughs> say it. <laughs> All right, so here's our CPU score. What was our temperature during that period? We have some thermal headroom, not a lot anymore. All right, so first of all, CPU score, I'm going to drag this over, is 11,654. Now, to give everyone a reminder, I don't remember, what did we start at? Was it like 7,000 or something? Something like that. Our last one was 10,400. Now we're at 11,654. As a reminder, um, we can come back over to this monitor for one second. Yeah. Okay, as a reminder, here's Linus's score. Uh, this is, so there, there's a couple scores with Time Spike Stream. If you're not familiar, there's the total score, which is this one. They're at 8,092. We don't know what ours, are, ours is presently because I didn't run the whole thing. Uh, you have the CPU score, which is a physics test. It's entirely CPU bound, more or less. 11,009. We're sitting at 11,654, so we're okay there. I might have some more room, but I'm pretty happy with that right now. So we're beating them there. Graphic score, 7,731. Uh, I don't know where we're at out of box. I think it's like 7,000. So we have a lot to gain here. We're ahead here, and we can probably do a bit more, maybe with some more memory tweaking. But I'm pretty happy with that starting point. So they are at... Do they have the frequencies in here? Okay, so they, it, assuming this is all accurate, they were at 4.8 gigahertz, which is where we are right now. I might push for 4.9. Uh, briefly, because we have about, what's our temperature over here? Uh, we maxed out during that test at 90 degrees. Yes, we were roughly 90 degrees in that test. So we've got about 10 degrees of headroom, a little less, maybe five degrees. So I might, I don't know, that's gonna be awfully close. I don't think I'm gonna be able to do, to do 49, maybe 49 in a couple cores. Uh, but yeah, that, so that's what they were running. Let me see what we can do for the next run here. Um, let's do, we need to start figuring out, now that we're ahead in CPU, we'll kind of leave that there for a minute. We need to start figuring out what our total score is so that I can get an idea of how much ground we have to make up. Uh, and I need to figure out, for example, do we need to put most effort into pushing our CPU score further or can our GPU carry some weight? Because if their GPU is better than ours, I'm going to have to try and claw back points in the CPU score. And the CPU score is not worth nearly as much in times by extreme because it's so GPU bound. So that's kind of the, the thought process I have right now coming into this. Uh, how much have you earned on Super Chat so far? I have no idea. Um, but I do appreciate it. Uh, from Laura Dreyer again. I think that's, is that Norwegian Kroner? I think that's Norwegian Kroner. Frank Jonasson Jonasson says, most time spent OC in a PC. Probably, I've fought pretty hard with some Xeons because um, we have a Xeon that's kind of unlocked, but not really. And it's, it's unlocked enough where you can, you can get some decent frequency out of it. I can't, it's a 12 core? I think it's a 12 core. Uh, it's an old one, X79 12 core. I spent a lot of time on that. Probably, probably two days playing around with that, ultimately to be unhappy with it. Um, if you're talking about like single PC, that would probably be it. So anyone joining in now, we're running the first graphics test in our next Time Spy complete run. And that'll tell us where we stand versus Linus Tech Tips. This is a friendly rivalry with Linus and his team, Alex the Great-ish, as he's called on Twitter, uh, I believe ran their tests for their Singularity PC build. And I think they're at 4.8 gigahertz on the CPU. They had a Titan V in there under, under Liquid. And, uh... Their score is 8,000 something, 8,092 total. 
11,000 on the CPU, which we're past now, and 7,700 on the GPU, which we are presently behind on. So we've done a couple things. I'll run everyone through the bench again, because a bunch of you I think have filtered in. Uh, but we'll let this finish first. Next question. Love your content and dedication. Keep it up from Ugg Kami. Thank you. Appreciate it. We will definitely keep it up. Uh, Tom's, can you overclock an H500P PS? What CPU is it? It's a, it's a 7980XE. <laughs> and uh, can you overclock the H500P? I mean, I guess we kind of did that already when we fixed it by adding mesh to it. Uh, next question. Wishbone, is there any more front mesh full towers coming out? That's a great question. <laughs> um, what is coming out? I know a couple of things coming out, and none of them have full front mesh. I, Silverstone's kind of, so here's the thing. Silverstone's been working on front mesh designs for a while now, and I was talking to them about this recently, because at, at CES, and they know this, I was a little disappointed with what they showed, and it's because a lot of it was following the trend of a flat front panel, uh, relatively poor ventilation, although better than most of the competitors, but not better than Silverstone's previous products. And I was disappointed by it. And uh, I let them know, and basically it was a matter of, of them saying, you know, we, we need to compete in this industry, and this is what people want right now. So if you disagree with that sentiment and you want mesh front panel cases, find a way to let Silverstone know, because someone needs to tell them, like, hey, the stuff you're doing with cases that have airflow, keep doing it. Uh, we've certainly told them, but I'm not buying tens of thousands of units like consumers are, so my word only gets so far. Uh, to answer your question, there is one coming out within the next six months, but I can't say anything about it right now. Uh, there will be more at Computex, but I don't know the details on them. I only know details on one mesh front panel case right now. Uh, it's a derivative of something else that exists, and uh, we'll let you know as soon as we can let you know more. Dun Dunamis says, coffee on me. $5 from New Zealand, I think. Thank you. We'll spend that on fried chicken or something later. <laughs> Still running, by the way. Okay, here we go. CPU test is done. So let's see what we did for CPU score in the hashtag rip LTT challenge. That's looking better. So we started at 7,070. Our baseline was, that's what our baseline was, no overclocks. Let's stop this shake. Uh, our graphic score here is, is our weakest point right now. CPU score, we're still at 11,600. We're 600 points ahead. We, we have a bit more room in the tank, I think. Graphics are at 7,000. So we need to gain about 10% in performance, which hopefully overclocking can do. CPU temperatures are what? We're in the 90s, so we don't have a ton of headroom for further CPU overclocking, but I might play around with it. Uh, I think it's time to get Afterburner going, and this is where we're going to have some trouble, because this CPU, uh, or the GPU rather, has had some issues with holding overclocks in this benchmark. So what I'm gonna do first, and this will be interesting for you all as well, I'm applying nothing for frequency on the core. What was that result? Okay, everyone remember this number, 7,010. 7,010 is our graphics score. All I'm doing is maxing out the power limit. Uh, hopefully it stays stable, it should. I've had issues with this card crashing a lot today, but I'm hoping it stays stable. And what this will tell us is from 7,010 baseline, what does increasing only the power limit do for us and ignoring the frequency and memory and just letting the GPU regulate itself with more power provision? And while this is running, I'll get back to Super Chat in a minute, but I'm going to walk back over to the bench. And for anyone who has tuned in, uh, eh, you know, in the last, since 15 minutes after we started, I'll show you what, what's going on here. So I think we're going to hand cam for this. Give us a second. Is that enough light? <clears throat> Watch your HDMI cable. I think you're good though. Uh, okay, so catch everyone up. If you already saw this, sorry, it'll be brief. And sorry about the fan noise. Uh, okay, first of all, Titan V under an EK Titan V water block. They sent us a blue fluid that's actually awesome. I appreciate it um, because it's basically GN blue. So there's our pump and reservoir. And we're going into a 360 millimeter radiator, which is right here. It's got a Sunon maglev fan. So here's, here's some fun trivia. If you didn't know, 
This fan, this Sunon fan in the bottom left here, is the uh, basically OEM version of what becomes these Corsair Maglev fans up here. So the, the Sunon, Sunon makes Corsair's Maglev fans. Corsair does a couple things to tune theirs, so they do offer value, uh, but I get these for about $13 a piece, the Sunon ones. Uh, and if you're just doing something like this, it's great. It's 3,500 RPM. I have it turned down to 80% right now. This is a Vardar, this is a Maglev non-pro, two Maglevs, another one in the middle. Uh, Noctua up here just in case the VRMs don't have perfect contact to the cold plate. So it's a full coverage block. Now, get back to what I was saying. Uh, we do have this shunt, the shunt's shorted right now, and I don't think we have a great way to show that, unfortunately. But uh, basically applied liquid metal to the shunt here, the shunt resistor here, and then one more that's over here under the water block. It's not contacting it, it's just under it. Uh, so we've shorted the three shunts, which in the past, I think from our old content, if I remember correctly, we showed about a 3% performance uplift. Not something I recommend for daily, but something that we're gonna need here because I think Linus's Titan V is better than ours. Uh, so we're gonna try and combat that a bit by uncapping our, our uh, power limit to some extent. We're changing the resistance basically. So it doesn't give you really higher frequency doing this. What it does is it gives you more stable frequency at the highs. So it's not like you offset higher, it's that your offset holds higher for longer. And other than that, uh, Thermal Take Flow 360 over here, going to the CPU. So the CPU and the GPU are isolated loops. And I chose that one and this one because they're 360. I have fast fans and the pumps are fast on both. So we can circulate the liquid through and get it cooled down faster, which uh, if you're not aware, does actually have a significant impact on performance. So, okay, I need to catch up with chat, see what everyone's saying. Link to buy Sunon fans. If any, I don't think, I guess you guys can't post links. Uh, Digikey, no, you're shorting three of them actually does help. We tested that. Someone said, I think you're only supposed to short three, two. There are four total on the card. There are three that we shorted. Uh, and I tested doing only two before and it didn't work or didn't work as well. I don't remember the details, but uh, Digikey anyway. Digikey is where I buy the Sunon fans. Uh, okay. And also, if our audio desyncs over time, sorry. There's nothing I can, can't do much about it. Uh, okay. So, yeah, we're not connected to internet or anything. I'm not submitting scores right now. But CPU test is almost done. I'll go through a couple more of these. Uh, microcasting, St. Louis says, hey, thanks for the great content. Any new info on the CTS Labs situation? I published everything I know as of now in yesterday's news video. If you haven't seen it, I think the first eight minutes are dedicated to that. Uh, the update is they stopped answering my questions. Uh, I believe they stopped answering Tom's hardware and Anantech, and they never answered any of our questions about financial involvement in the stock market with AMD or about uh, involvement with Viceroy beyond their blanket statement to press saying Viceroy is not our customer. That's different from being involved with Viceroy though. So they skirted that one. That's my latest update, uh, which I know is not really that great. Do you have a heat monitor measure device? If you mean like a thermocouple reader, yes, we use them all the time. Um, okay. So basically, long story short, we need to increase the clock. Big surprise. So let's try, uh, let's just do like 80 here. And let's just do 50 here. I, with Firestrike, so Firestrike and Time Spy behave differently. We were stable up to, I drag this over here. We were stable up to 200 megahertz offset and 200 megahertz offset on the, on the HBM and the core in some of our tests during the review. Time Spy doesn't like those settings at all. It crash, hard crashes. So we have to start a lot lower here. So let's just apply those and kind of start it slow so that we're not instantly disappointed at the GPU's capabilities. And then we'll see if we have to drag more performance out of the CPU. Graphics score was 7,008, I think, or six. Basically no different. So in this instance, uh, I don't know, maybe the shunt mod is playing around with it, but in this instance, that's, that's where we're stuck right now. So um, let's see. this next one's running. Graphics test one's going, okay. Anything in chat? AMD confirmed vulnerabilities in a forum post today. That's good to know. And I never questioned the vulnerabilities. Uh, this is going back to the CTS Labs thing. So 
CTS Labs, we have a big video on it. I think it's called like AMD Assassination Attempt. You should watch it if you haven't. But uh, their vulnerabilities, we spoke with expert researchers who discovered Meltdown and Spectre, a couple of them, and they confirmed with us loosely off record for the most part, well, one went on record later, but mostly off record, confirmed with us that they believed the exploits and the vulnerabilities CTS Labs reported to be of merit and rooted in legitimacy. What everyone I spoke to questioned, and I'm questioning as well as I get more into it, is the, uh, the professionalism and the method of presentation of that data. It's written in a very aggressive fashion uh, it doesn't have a lot of technical detail in the initial post. They later added some. Very highly aggressive, though. And Viceroy somehow had a 30-page, like, tirade, like, just giant diatribe out within 30 minutes or, or hours, anyway, of CTS Labs report going up. And they said, Viceroy, the president, said that someone leaked them the document. Viceroy and CTS claim that they're not connected. CTS only has a couple of employees. Viceroy says someone leaked them the document and they took a sizable short position on AMD. So I question the motive behind all of it because the tone of publication is so oddly aggressive that it just seems strange to me. So that's, I, th I think that's my update on the CTS lab situation. But um, Moto, Mot Motorsport says 1090T. Oh, is, you mean like the uh, uh, Phenom, right? We, I think we tested one of those recently. We did a revisit. Thanks for the three bucks. Uh, Manbat. <laughs> Ever considered to run Windows 10 Enterprise LTSB 2016 on the test bench? Uh, LTSB has no store, no edge, less Windows 10 background services. Yeah, I mean, the th maybe for something like, I don't know. I don't know. I honestly don't know anything about it. But... Um, eliminating background services is great. We wouldn't run it on our normal test benches because uh, you have to retain some level of reality with those because we're ultimately reporting on consumer products with those. So although we do try to keep a really highly clean environment for testing, we also try to establish uh, a barrier where we say, okay, we're drawing the line here. We need to keep some level of consumer relatability with our tests. So Windows 10 with all the bullshit that's involved with it is where we drew that line. Uh, test is running, by the way. I think we have like a, an 80 megahertz overclock, I think, on the core of the GPU and 50 something, 25 or 50 on the HBM. Thank you, Steve, for your extensive testing. Uh, absolutely. That's what I'm here for. Thank you for the $2. Travis Peacock says, need to use that Dyson to pull in pull to bring down temps. Yes, we do a push-pull of Dyson. Uh, we already went over this, though. Uh, it's actually disallowed from the hardware bot scoring system, sadly. Oh, media would have an unfair advantage, naturally. Actually, Linus would totally kick our asses then because he could just hook up that Dyson to uh, the CPU and I think create, create sub-ambient temperatures, which should be physically impossible, but not with that. All right, benchmark complete. Temperatures, we've still got, no, nah, yeah, we're hitting like 94 on some of these now. So we're out of headroom. Some of that's because ambient has increased quite a bit. There we go. Now we're getting big jumps. Okay, so let's go over, go over what we have here. Recap everyone. That was with an 80 megahertz core, 50 megahertz HBM. We're at 78.98 right now for the total score. Graphics, 74.77. CPU is still 11,600. So... Uh, to recap, Linus is at, okay, let's get this up. All right, so we'll recap a few things here and hopefully you can see it okay. We're not doing screen capture, it's, it's too much to set up. Uh, all right, so this is the Hall of Fame Time Spy Extreme on 3D Mark's website. Hardware Bot's got a, a different ranking, but uh, same idea. They didn't submit theirs to Hardware Bot, so we're just going off of this. So, um, what we have, we are presently before, I think we just beat that score. Yeah, we just beat our old score, but I haven't connected to internet yet. So we are presently at 7688 points total. And let me show you the impact of having four memory channels for this test. It's pretty crazy. Uh, previously, we were at 7461 for graphics score. We're at 7477 now. And 
I think part of that is shorting the shunts. I didn't do that last time, if I remember correctly. So we might have some more headroom here still. CPU score, we were at 9,000. And now we're at 11,600. So uh, getting into, into big increases there. And that's largely because two problems. One, I only had two sticks of memory last time. So we're a dual channel. Two, the X299 Dark, coincidentally, uh, had a busted channel on it. So I had EVGA replace it because one of the channels was dead. Anyway, previous score 7688. We're currently at 7898. Let's see where that would theoretically put us. Uh, that would theoretically put us 7898. So we're right at JBN 1010. What was this person's CPU score? So this person 11,746. They're a bit ahead of us there. I th we can pass that. We're, that's within margin of error. Uh, Next one, 79.44, Capstad 2. What's their scoring? 11,200. We're past that score for CPU, but they're, they're ahead of us by 100 points on GPU, which is, I think, weighted heavier for this benchmark. 80.24 uh, for this person. <laughs> Can't read that. Uh, and then Linus up here, number 6, 80.92. And if we want to shoot for the stars, I guess we could try and pass Zerv here at 81.38. So what's serve score if we want to get ambitious? If we want to get ambitious, uh, we've passed the CPU score, but he's got a way high GPU score. We can try it though. All right, so if we pass Linus, that puts us in sixth. If we pass this person, that puts us in fifth. Let's go ahead and do another overclock run. And I may end up trying to push the CPU harder to get a bit of extra headroom. So let's push this up to 100 and just see if it's stable. I've had a lot of instability issues past this point, so I'm gonna leave that there for now. And again, it clocks higher in Fire Strike, but Time Spy Extreme really hates uh, GPU clock overclocks, or at least mine anyway. I'm gonna check chat and everything. Okay, so catching everyone up, I think you're all pretty much caught up right now. Uh, 4.8 gigahertz on the CPU. We have a meme going where uh, apparently if you donate to Super Chat and say what CPU, then I look disappointed and say what it is. <laughs> we're at 4.8 gigahertz. Memory, we have, so we're max memmed right now. We have um, 32 gigabytes in there, I want to say. Yeah, 32. It's rated for 3600. I think CL16. We're at 4000. We've done some memory timing tuning. And uh, also our max memmed to something like eight or nine gigabytes, which is intentional. It helps with stability a bit because uh, otherwise Windows can cause some crashes. And then the GPU we've pushed a little bit, which is underwater. I wanna read some of these questions. Justin Parrish, is GN going to review the Thermal Take View 91 Super Tower? Is that, I think I know what that is, hang on. Thermal Take View 91. Oh yeah, I think I do know what this case is. No, we're not planning on reviewing that case. I saw it. I saw it at CES. A um, couple problems with that one. I don't want it in my house because it's gigantic. And uh, also, the View 91, it, it, it's kind of like the SMA8, which we've also looked into benchmarking for air. Uh, you start getting into territory where it's so far outside of what's reasonable for our test bench that it's almost irrelevant. Like the SMA8, again, is a great example, which I think we might try and get and do open loop testing on standardized, in which case I would test the View 91. But um, it's clearly, I mean, it's the case is too big and it's not at all built for what we test with. Uh, so probably not. If there's enough interest, maybe. I do know that the View 91 is really, uh, is limited volume, so. I don't think they're making a lot of them. Uh, Jennifer Roger says, for the future snowflake plushies, also rip LTT. Yes, yeah, so that's the hashtag, hashtag rip LTT. If you want to join in the fun, make sure to tag them on Twitter. Send them this way. Uh, has Linus popped up in chat? Has anyone seen the Linus Tech Tips account in chat? <laughs> uh, still running the next test, by the way, graphics too, I think. Wayne Nutt says, Steve, do you ever look in the mirror and say to yourself, damn, I'm just too good? I think earlier I looked in the mirror and said the opposite of that because we tripped the power, uh, tripped the breaker, 
which was why we were late to the stream because overclocking. So this Corsair uh, AX sixteen hundred I, it plugs in via USB and it's got what I believe is a fairly accurate uh, power reading through software. You can check through the wall, obviously your current clamp, but that indicated we were doing something like uh, I think we were hitting a thousand watts, which isn't crazy, but the wall is fifteen amp. The breaker, the circuit's fifteen amps. And we had other stuff going too. So yeah, no, I did not say that. Moving Frag says, running the Time Spy Extreme for the first time on the stock settings right now. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the party. Got only 5126 uh, for the total score, I suppose. 4791 GPU, 8500 CPU. Should I try to overclock? I'm sure that's the whole point of it. Um, do so within reason. The, the best way to kill something Overclocking your CPU would be pushing voltages that you don't understand too high. So do research. Uh, I'll give you some quick pointers. I don't, did you say what CPU you're on? You didn't say what CPU you're on, but I'll give, I'll give everyone some, uh, some basics. So uh, with AMD, be careful of SOC voltage. Pushing that too high is very bad. It, it'll degrade over time. With Intel, be careful of uh, SA, system agent voltage. VCC SA is often what it's called. Pushing that too high is also deadly. Uh, well, yeah, any voltage can be deadly, I guess, if you push it high enough. But um, your biggest concern is degradation over time without knowing it, because you won't find out for months if you pushed it too high. And suddenly what will happen is your clocks won't go as high as they used to, or they will require more voltage to do so. Uh, so yeah, absolutely overclock. It's fun. Uh, it's cool to learn about the hardware. It'll teach you a lot, but be willing to invest some time to research just just start with like google safe voltage for your cpu uh check multiple sources against each other don't trust one and that'll give you a starting point um, the safe voltages that are published on forums are often a bit conservative so you should be fine so let's look at our score 7971 what did i say we're trying to be 80 something was it 89 what gpu is it good luck man go for number five it's a titan v and we will definitely go for number five 8092 is what we're trying to beat. We're at 7971 versus Linus Tech Tips 8092. And they have a 7700 graphics score. We have 7550. So we're, we're a decent bit ahead, 600 points ahead in CPU. We need to gain in graphics and CPU, I guess, to try and make up for it. So what kind of room do we have here? I think we can do some more CPU tuning. Got a couple points there. We only really need like 40 points, which is also close to variance. So let's see if it crashes when I push this to like 75. I think it will, but we'll give it a shot. That's HBM2 voltage on the Titan V. And uh, you know what? We should actually save some time and just run that GPU only because we don't need to do the whole thing if we're just trying to see if the graphics test is stable. GPU only. Okay, so let's see how that does. We're, we're kind of getting to my limits here on the Titan V, I think. But I think we can do it, we need 40 points. Uh, just reading some of the hashtag RipGN. We got this. That is not, you're on the wrong side of history, my friend. Uh, okay. Let's see. <clears throat> S2, SRT, Tech Jesus has risen and said heathens that are LTT must be put in their place. The Tech Messiah has spoken. Oh, it scrolled off screen, probably for the best. <laughs> uh, your, your profiles should be Tech Messiah. Jeremy uh, Zeta says, this is a small view brewery, a viewery, if you will. Have some celebratory fried chicken after your victory. We will absolutely do that. Thank you, Zeta. I appreciate it. Always good to see you in chat. Graphics 2 still running. Any good Netflix recommendations from Bill Huntshallow? I have no idea. I don't watch Netflix. Uh, I like Grand Tour on Amazon or whatever it is. Amazon Prime. Uh, Robert Mail, $5. Leon Lee O11 Error Dynamic 1. That's a great question. Uh, we have already agreed to sampling. We're waiting for them to arrive. I don't, one, I don't know off the top of my head when we'll get them. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head when the review embargo lifts, and I couldn't tell you anyway, but 
uh, we will be reviewing at least one of them somewhat immediately. And I'm not positive which is coming out first, but I definitely want to look at both because when we saw them at CES, I think, no, they were definitely the my favorite case from CES, the uh, Leon Lee 011 Aaron Dynamic. They're good. They're good. Well designed. We'll see how they perform, but looks good. Zach Fisher, is 2164 megahertz on a 1070 good? Yeah, that's very good. Hydro H105, good for it. You know, I don't really remember the H105. Is that the cool it one? <clears throat> We're running graphics to H105. Which cooler is this? Oh no, this is Ace Attack. Yeah, that's Ace Attack for sure. I mean, it's fine. I don't really... All the Ace Attack coolers at the same size are more or less the same. All that's different is the fans. If you're replacing them anyway, you can kind of buy any of them. Uh, warranty matters. So next question, Kevin Ashby, we're just waiting on this test to finish. Don't know if it was posted already, but Linus had the CPU at 4.8 gigahertz and the GPU at 1912. Thank you, that's very valuable information. Uh, we're at 4.8, so we've got the CPU and I th we're ahead quite a bit. So they didn't, oh, they didn't do any memory tuning. I think they were at uh, Jetx specs. And I think they had 100, like 100 gigabytes of memory. This benchmark is memory hungry, but not that much. So I think we're ahead in memory profile tuning. All right, so reminder, we did not run CPU that time. We're trying to see if GPU is stable. And it was. 7678 is pretty good. Uh, okay, so here we go. Here's the moment of truth. Let's, let's run this um, properly, the full thing, and see if that puts us past Linus. And then we'll try and take fifth after that, just because fifth is a nice uh, psychologically secure number. <laughs> five sounds better than six. Then you can say you're in the top five without anyone having to know that you're five. Uh, Laura Dreyer, yes, you're right about knock. Okay, cool. Mohammed says, had to turn on VPN to donate, otherwise I get function not available in your area. YouTube must be thinking that the donation from Africa has Ebola. I appreciate you going through the VPN. That certainly helps. I didn't know that YouTube had such restrictions. That's weird. Power consumption, 2,000 watts. No, uh, the power supply is a 1,600 watt power supply. It's... I. What's the max? Is it titanium these days? I think it's 80 plus titanium. If I remember correctly, the story Corsair told me at CES was that they were actually trying to, uh, trying to ask the 80 plus organization to add a new certification for this power supply. And the 80 plus group said no. Uh, but no, so we're not at 2000 watts. I, I'll check in a bit. I don't have a current clamp or anything on any of this, but um, we we're doing a thousand watts earlier when I had a lower overclock on it. So somewhere around there, maybe a bit more. Uh, okay. Bazinga X, next one who asks what CPU, tell them 386 DX40. Crush a Linus, this is war. Damn right, pick a side. Uh, Martin, what's with EVGA showing no love for the classified line? My 1080 classified has no full cover water blocks. I don't know. I wasn't aware of that, actually. Um, I think we have a 1080 classified. I think, no, actually, I don't think we do. I think we have the, uh, the FTWs. I never got a classified for that one. JC, keep up the excellent work, GN. Here's some lunch money so you guys don't have to do vacuum reviews. I appreciate it. Uh, Dyson did not approach us. However, we've been approached by companies of similar relevance to our industry, and I've said no. Uh, but I, the, the direct donations from viewers and things like Patreon do legitimately help, as do, I'll plug it now while this is running, the mod mats. So if you don't have one, uh, store.gamersnexus.net. We have one here on demo. This is pretty scratched up, but it's still really durable. This one is our original sample. We've improved them a lot since then. So uh, we've improved the durability a lot. There's a lot of like liquid metal stuff on here. I need to wash it. But um, we've improved the durability a ton since then. We actually, we got rid of the background color for the next round. So this dark gray here will be gone. It's just gonna be a black color of the mat now, which is, can I do this safely? That's the color it will be, uh, which is actually gonna be, it'll be a bit better. It'll, it'll reduce the amount of paint. It'll um, help with durability further, with, which is something we invested in before the final production run. Uh, 
So yeah, these are going to be shipping within the next two weeks. Store.gamersnexus.net if you want to pick one up. They're anti-static. They're not meant to be mouse pads. Clearly, I'm using them, using this as one, but uh, it is an anti-static mat first and foremost. It's meant to protect the table uh, and ground you. It's made actually in a factory that makes stuff for clean rooms. So we were pretty damn serious when we spec'd it out, um, which, is, which is why the price is the way it is, because low volume plus really high quality material is a uh, makes for a good product but you know one that we have to do in limited volumes because we're not a giant manufacturer so this test is going i think we're on cpu now uh like i said please do consider the mod mats because we've got a, a good amount coming in this time we sold out instantly last time and uh, i think we might again but we'll see should ship last week of march first week of april if you want one and uh this is seconds away from finishing GPU score was seven. Oh yeah, seventy ten. That was okay. Adam Schneibel, two dollars. Thank you. Say hi to Snowflake from me, uh, from Engineer Six. I will do that. However, she is banned from this room because I don't want her or her tail anywhere close to the seven fans we have on the bench. Is that it? Ah, oh, so close. Eighty thirty one. The score to beat is 8092 so we're trying to be 8092 that's linus's score we're at 8031 right now wait what happened to our cpu score that dropped 600 points weird that's interesting i wonder if we throttled or something let's uh we can recover that for sure that's definitely recoverable because that's the cpu score we lost not the gpu so let me save this 175 all right got it and let's just double check everything in BIOS because we just dropped 600 points off the CPU, which sounds to me like potentially throttling. Uh, we might be getting there. It's, the room's warmer than it was earlier, but I can swap a fan if I have to or, or we give it a break for a minute. I think I ran that bench basically immediately after the previous one as well. It's just probably still warmed up. All right, so we need 60 points to beat Linus and crew. I might try CL15, but I think we're gonna wait on that for a minute. What do I have for fan headroom? That's just VRM, but let's just go ahead and max that out too. Okay, so we max out the VRM fan just in case. We do have things we can do here. Uh, primarily trying to go down to CL15 and we can try and push like two cores to 49. Otherwise, I think we're good to go, really. Okay, so let's let's just try this again and see if it was just a thermal thing. Because if we can pick up those 600 points and get back to where it was on the previous run, then we'll, we'll pass them. Decrease ambient. You know, we actually should do that. Uh, can you lock that? Or are you you're tethered with the headphones? Can you just... Drop it one degree on the thermostat. <clears throat> okay, so Andrew's, uh, Andrew on the camera is dropping our temperature or our, our thermostat by one degree. So that should help a bit. It's actually getting pretty damn warm in here. <clears throat> there we go, AC's on. <laughs> like that. Like that, the air conditioner is part of the war chest for overclocking. We're considering going chilled or something, but we'll see what if, if Linus retaliates. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know that he'll respond. <laughs> He's got bigger fish to fry. Uh, but I, I, would like to, I would like to see them up the ante in the way that only Linus tech tips would do. And then we can respond in kind. So let's try this, see if it's stable and everything. Um, let's just, let me just double check temperatures, make sure we didn't really mess something up thermally. Okay, it's reasonable now. It's in the 30s. I'd like it to be lower. Uh, we dropped the thermostat a bit, but that'll take a minute to kind of decrease room temperature. So we'll let that run and see how that goes. I might like open some windows or something if we need to. Ice water, yeah, I know, we considered it. Uh, okay. Let's see. 
Buildzoid is telling you to call him, okay? <laughs> Buildzoid, I'll message you on uh, Discord. I can probably get my laptop or something to do a call. I don't think I have it set up here to do that. Your timings, okay, what can we improve? Buildzoid from actually hardcore overclocking says your timings, they suck. All right, well, that's good. That's, that's what I want to hear because that means we have room to improve them. TRRDS should be four, okay. We can do that after this run, just see what our baseline is. TRRDL should be six, okay. I want to see where this goes first. And then we'll take uh, Buildzoid's advice. Do you have any overclock tutorials out? No. I, I mean, well, yeah, I think we do have some old ones um, for GPUs, which are a bit simpler. I'm not, I can give you basics. Clearly, I'm not really qualified to do heavy overclock tutorials. That's Buildzoid's territory, Der Bauer, uh, people like that, Dan Cop. So actually, hardcore overclocking and Der Bauer are both uh, XOC channels if you want more detailed stuff, go check them out. Uh, they, I mean, builds right, I think, just did like an hour-long memory video the other day. Trent Sorgdragger, Linus getting binned Titan V is confirmed. His is better than ours, I think. Uh, let's see, Max Beast, $10. Is there a good guide to overclock the 4770K? Yeah, so if you're looking for OC guides, overclock.net has really good ones. I would recommend starting there. Uh, coolant is already hot. Does that affect the score now? Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, it doesn't affect the score directly, but it affects if the if it's an extra. I think we had five degrees of headroom previously, so if it's an extra five degrees warmer, which is completely within reason, then yes, it's possible we thermal throttle, uh, which would explain the huge 600 point drop off of our clocks. Wishbone, who has the highest benchmarks with AMD CPU and Vega? I'm not sure. Hardware Bot and uh, 3D Marks Hall of Fame would have that. Can it run, run SimCity 4? No. No, I don't think it can. Okay, what's Bill Zoid saying? TFOS should be 16. That is quite a bit lower. We can do that for sure. Okay, so we've got some timings to improve after this is done. Uh, I think we're in graphics test. Yeah, we're still in graphics test right now. So we need to go through CPU testing still, which will be next. Uh, okay, a couple more comments. CJ Hansen says, Sierra Ray Spalding should buy Will Hinks a new graphics card. The roomie needs a new GPU, and may the silicon be with you. I think I've just, just contributed to some roommate subversion. Uh, Dre G says, dust must be a problem if only you had a Tyson. Nori, uh, where is Snowflake? P.S. Shoutouts to Zeta. Snowflake is, as I said, banished from this room, so she doesn't jump on the bench. Bill Wanchalo, what CPU? Well, Bill, let me tell you about the 486 processor. It's a 7980XE. Uh, Russian name, I'm sorry. I don't know how to say that. Does Corsair's R275 top mesh filter match the dimensions of the 270? I'm not sure. Yeah, the 270 doesn't have a dust filter, right? That was a downside. Uh, it's very similar tooling, if not identical. So I think if it doesn't fit, it could probably be made to fit. Maybe try, try email Corsair's RMA department, tell them you have a 270 and you want to buy the 275R's dust filter, see what they say. Maybe they'll ship one to you for free or something. Uh, Torben Hansen, $5, thank you. Almost at the end of the CPU test, guys, then we'll see their scores. Why, uh, what's the GPU? Titan V. Gabriel Langevin, show us around. Hope more merch is coming soon. Yeah, so like I said, uh, mod mats are the big thing for us. We do have more stuff coming uh, eventually. It just takes a while to do all the all the go-betweens of the factories and stuff. Because Oh, there we go. Okay. What was theirs? 8090-something? 8092. That's like, that's just margin of error at that point. Dang. Okay. Okay, let's, I mean, we're going to, I think we could pass it if I just sat here and ran it over and over again, but let's do Buildzoid suggestions just to make it a little faster. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, we have more stuff coming. Uh, my job is media production, but uh, I am trying to do more work on custom products. We're trying to really take the, the GN quality brand and apply it to stuff that you can use for system building. 
So we're making more stuff. The mod mat's the big thing for us right now. I'd like to see those continue to sell through because it's a major investment for us. We're not a manufacturing company, but uh, we're learning a lot, doing better each run. I'm very happy with the progress. Tifa, what did you say, 16 or something? Okay, Buildzoid from Actually Hardcore Overclocking is helping me right now. We've gotten to that point. So, Tifa, 16. RRDS4. Okay. RRDL6. I think we're already there. Yeah, we're already there on that one. I got that one right. Uh, 101 BCLK might be viable. Yes, maybe it, we'll try that last. TRC should be TRAS plus TRP. TRAS could probably do 26, okay? TRAS, wait, what? T oh, TRAS, 26, okay. Uh, and what was the other thing here? TRAS plus TRP should be TRC. TRC, we're on auto right now. Do we want to stay on auto, Mr. Buildzoid? Or do I manually type something in? How about the rest of this stuff? Anything here? Uh, okay, so 101 BCLK we might try. Um, let me, let's, let's try it. Let's just save this as a profile. Steve BZ1, okay. Let's try 101 BCLK, it might fail. If it does, that's fine. We'll bump it back down. Okay. That might need to go up, we'll see. TRC to 42, okay, let's do that as well, I guess. <clears throat> if it boots, we'll see if it boots first. Okay, that's promising. So we are booting. I'm gonna do one more change per uh, Buildzoid's notes. I think we were at 80 something, 80, 86, something like that, we're trying to be 80, 92. That is within margin of error. Uh, as I said, I could sit there and keep running it over and over until it passes them. Or we do something a bit more secure and apply some better clocks and, or timings in this case and uh, make it a bit harder for everyone. Okay. What was the suggestion here? TRC to 42. Okay. So let's do that. So Buildzoid, if you're listening, uh, do you have any commentary you want to add that I can read for everyone on what the timings you just had me tune uh, do? Like TFA, we can talk about that one. You, you mentioned TFA to me before. Give me a run through of that and chat or something. I'll read it out. Okay, so booting. Looks like it might be stable for a boot at least. We'll see if it's stable for a benchmark. EBF, ever thought of running cold tap water from the faucet into a loop for consistent cooling? <laughs> I've thought about doing, I mean, before this, we were thinking about doing dry ice, basically, uh, in a bucket with an antifreeze. I think Titan V's encounter a cold bug at negative 10, so we'd be okay up until that point. And um, considered it, but we got to leave something in the tank. Please pass. Thank you. All right, so that's running with the new timings. We'll see if it's stable. Uh, this is max mem at eight gigabyte, 8.9 gigabytes, something like that. Time spy tends to eat a lot of memory, so that's the best we could do with max mem. We have a light overclock on the video card. It's a Titan V. I think we're 100 megahertz core, 75 HBM. I say light. It's light compared to some of our no, it's, it's actually pretty good because Time Spy enumerates the clock a bit differently than some of our other tests we've shown. Um, let's see, who else? Catching up on the Super Chat stuff. Adam Schneibel says, lose the TT mouse. Oh, is it the TT one? Yeah, I don't like that mouse actually. I'm only using it because I only have to click on like three things before I have to I stop touching it. Uh, <laughs> Here's a small donation to the GN More Stable Table Fund. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about that. This is an adjustable height table, so that's where most of our problems come from. I did tighten the legs today, though. Uh, 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 okay. Still scrolling up. Still catching up. 
Okay, go for number five. Yes, we're doing that. Uh, 1.4 is 1.4 vCore on 1800X too much for 24/7 at four gigahertz. Can you bring it down a bit? Uh, I don't know. That's I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. Where's Buildzoid at? There he is. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think 1.4 is okay, but I haven't read up on uh, or even looked at the 1800X or Ryzen CPUs for a while. We're focusing on new CPUs right now. So I'd have to refresh my own memory and look at our own reviews. Uh, put RIP LTT in the description when you submit. I can do that. <laughs> That's from Alexander. Kyle User, I really like the idea of standardized custom loop testing in different cases. Please follow through. I'm not promising it. I do want to do standardized custom loop component tests. I don't know if I'll do it with complete cases like we do with air cooling. That's a lot of work. It's a lot of overhead. And I'm not afraid of doing a lot of work, but uh, it's enough work where we probably lose money until our, uh, our kind of like baseline views increases. So we might go that direction. First, what will probably happen is standardized uh, open loop component testing like blocks because that's easier to do and I can, I can do that all on my own uh, for the most part. Waffle Fur, ever consider using a fat alpha cool Monsta or the super fat Phobia Extreme Radiator for these? Uh, someone pointed me towards some fat radiators earlier, so I would say yes in the last couple hours I have. What was your first computer? It was a Pentium 4 hyper-threaded CPU. I don't remember the name of it with um, whatever GPU was out at the time. 512 megabyte X800 or X1800 or something like that. Whichever one came out in the early 2000s. I know there was another one later. Do you like memes? Apparently we like creating them. Like the, uh, what, what CPU meme? Okay. Superhero, there's no proper overclocking guide there. Trust me. Uh, got the 8700K, no clue what's safe. Overwhelming BIOS options. Yeah, you kind of have to look per board basically. Uh, Overclock.net does have great guides though. Dan, I think we're unstable on this one, Buildzoid. Uh, so those timings might not be stable. Or the 101 BCLK. I can try boost voltage, I guess. Maybe try voltage boosting. <clears throat> okay, so this is gonna, let's restart this. And do a 1.36 voltage, otherwise I'll drop BCLK down and then we should still beat them anyway, but I'd like to beat them in a more significant fashion. <laughs> That's more fun. Super close, 80, 80 something. We're trying to beat 8092, I think. It's very close. Dang. Come on, numlock. Let's try 1.365. I don't know what kind of temperature we're getting. Probably, probably pushing our limits here with uh, with thermals in this room. <clears throat> Remind me, close these windows later. Okay, outside is significantly cooler. <laughs> I'm opening windows so that we drop the room temperature. That'll help a bit. Definitely need to close that later. Okay. That will help a bit. <laughs> Damn, that already dropped temperature over there. Okay, so... A couple more points to gain back. Uh, anyone who's curious, so we did some tuning of timings with Buildzoid earlier, and uh, I asked him, uh, what do we need to know about TFAW, T-F-A-W, which is one of the timings he had us change. And he just gave me an answer. So that answer says, TFAW equals four active window. This is the time, this is the time window in which four activates are allowed the same rank. T-R-R-D, another one we modified specifies the length of an activate. So for TFAW equals TRRDS times four for max performance. So that's how we came to those numbers. And I'll plug them again, actually hardcore overclocking if you want to check them out. Uh, Buildzoid does some contract work with us on PCB analysis and stuff like that. All right, so. Score to beat again. 
8092, if we want to go for five, it's 8138. We're not going to get past that, I don't think, without better cooling or a better card. So this, this one, I should have really just run the CPU test, see if it's stable, I guess, but might as well let it go at this point. This one will determine if we need to drop that BCLK or, or pump the voltage a bit, depending on if we're at our limits or not. And let me check chat. The last bench actually finished. I restarted it. <laughs> it froze. I don't think it did. Can't you just use air conditioning? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're using using like global air right now. <laughs> Open the windows, helping a lot actually. Uh, at least with how I feel in this room. I don't know about the system. Superhero Kaif says there's no. Oh, I got that one. <laughs> Uh, sneaky board. This would be a great time to talk about how good that Pixio monitor is. P.S. When's that fan tunnel video coming? Or did I miss the posting? I, I hate this monitor, and uh, I've been looking more into the fan stuff. We have equations for calculating CFM now, so basically where I need to be, I need to establish a standardized bench for the host platform. Uh, I need to figure out how far we're going with thermal testing on it because that adds a million variables. I was considering building a custom thermal test rig, which would take time. Um, but we have the equations sorted for CFM calculations based on LPM. So we're, we're getting there. Uh, next one, the Army 126. Why don't you and could you start reviewing Fantax cases? I love them and they are super good. Uh, I don't know, they can email me, I guess. We tried to meet up with them at one of the events recently, but they didn't have uh, time in their meeting schedule for us. So um, they don't sample us. I'm not aware of what their new products are because they don't keep me in the loop. So by the time I hear about it, it's normally old news. The last one we looked at wasn't a great case though. Uh, that's not to say they don't make great cases, but I wouldn't apply a blanket statement to any company if they make good stuff. I would say this particular stuff is good by them for any company, not just Fantex. All right, so we're just trying to see if this is stable on CPU, which is about to run. We'll find out in a few seconds, probably. And then we shall know if we need to drop down that BCLK. Trying to catch up on Super Chat. <clears throat> uh, okay, so... Zaris says, go Steve, destroy Linus, hashtag rip LTT. Well, we need to get this stable first. So I think we're going to drop that BCLK back down to 100, and that should be sufficient within margin of error of running the test. I might be able to push the GPU clock a couple more megahertz, which should secure us the last couple of points we need. Just need to get into BIOS. Uh, okay, so we're going to drop BCLK to 100 from 101. And then we're going to drop this to 1.36 for vCore. I'm going to save that. Yeah, Buildzoid says drop BCLK. I, I think that'll be sufficient to at least get the score we want. Uh, Sormus says, here's a small donation to the GN. Oh, yeah, he got that one. More stable table fund. Um, rip, hashtag Clint says, hashtag rip LTT succeed and I'll sign up for Patreon. Well, now we have motive. Didn't have any before. Uh, Anthony, not much, but a thank you. Love your stuff. Thank you, Anthony. Monkey Chips, you got this. Hashtag rip LTT. Uh, yeah, here's the lose the TT mouse one. Saw that. <laughs> Uh, okay, it's booting. Center negative. Do core temps of 60 degrees Celsius plus on an, uh, a closed loop liquid cooler automatically mean permeation will occur because the water block is just millimeters from the tubes. So um, the liquid temperature sensors are within the water block and uh, we have some videos of teardowns. So they are, they're in ACE tech coolers. They're basically uh, just above the cold plate and the chamber that liquid goes through, through the cold plate microfins, they're above that chamber 
I think on the intake, so the warmest water coming in, and uh, at 60 degrees Celsius, you are facing permeation danger, but it's not like hitting 60 C will instantly jeopardize your loop. If it's 60 C for a prolonged period, then yes. If, if you're just kind of using your system, you're gaming for an hour, and at the end of it, you're like, oh man, my liquid temperatures were 65, you're probably completely fine. You might have a, a minor amount of permeation, but we're talking more, uh, one, that's a somewhat conservative number that ACEDEC gives. Two, uh, you need to be running at 60C plus for a while to have a meaningful amount of permeation. Obviously, you keep it lower than that. 60 degrees on liquid temperature is actually is pretty damn high. So to get there to begin with indicates a problem elsewhere, like the fan speed or something. What would happen to a GPU CPU RAM with an OC that is stable, but no voltage has been added? Approximately speaking, would degradation be sped up? How much, if any, would lifespan be affected? No voltage has been added. So, so a higher, uh, higher frequency is what I think you're saying, but not a higher voltage. Voltages are what kill parts or degrade them. If you're just running the highest frequency that your stock voltages can handle, you're probably fine. But there are motherboards that will uh, be overzealous on how much voltage they apply. We've talked about them before. Gigabyte had one and they fixed it, thankfully. It's not a, a deadly voltage, but auto voltage sometimes will allow you to sustain higher clocks than perhaps auto voltage should because they're aggressive on it and the voltage tables uh, are aggressive and the LLC tables are aggressive and things like that. But if you're not increasing your voltage, you should be fine within reason. Uh, Christopher gave 25 PHP. Is that Philipp Philippines or something? Thank you, appreciate it. Troy Leonard, LTT is crying in Canada. Smoke them like, smoke them like I my board. Uh, Travis, monoblock to stabilize the VRM on overclock more. I think the VRM is fine. It's under the EVGA. Yeah, that VRM is definitely fine. The heat pipe's not even hot to the touch. Um, no, that's fine. It's it's under like the maxed out dark uh, EVGA dark motherboard fans so and we've done thermal testing on that it's it's well within spec so we actually don't it, yeah we don't really need it uh claim the CPU is Horizon 3 Caddy Rayhart awesome OC for a 486 what GPU GeForce 256 <laughs> oh it's the uh it's the original IGP that's what we're doing Dan Kopp may stop with overclocking completely. He posted something like this on his Facebook page. I did not see that. Bjorn uh, sent the super chat that noted that. I didn't. I was not aware of that. Let's see. So we're just waiting for this to finish. I really should have run a CPU only test, but we'll do that next time if it crashes. Uh, uh, uh. Have you considered testing SSDs? Yes. Um, we've sort of done SSD testing. For the longest time, I was trying to build a really solid SSD test bench, but it's, it's really difficult to test them properly. And uh, I, I was never quite happy with our test suite for it, even talking with manufacturers, I just never was happy with it. So we basically said, we've got a limited amount of resources being mostly time, but also money, but mostly time. and. Uh, after investigating it heavily for on and off for two years, talking to people at every trade show about SSD testing, basically said, you know what? We don't need to do this. We'll focus our efforts on GPU, CPU, cooling, stuff that I know. Uh, I, I'm not afraid to try and become competent in SSD testing, but it's pretty complex to do it properly. And I know enough to say that I don't know enough to review SSDs right now. I would refer you to Alan Malventano's SSD reviews. His are some of the best I've seen uh, he writes for PC per, so that's that's where I would go for it. But I, I have no intention of competing in that market right now. We have things we do more competently than that. Uh, Asus News E270 board. Okay, where did I park my Renault Clevo 1.5? I have no idea. I don't know where you parked. I'm like Microsoft. God damn it! Are you serious? 8091. Score to be 
8092. Okay, so we're within margin of error. <sighs> if this benchmark didn't take so long to finish, it wouldn't be as bad. 8091. Man. Okay. <laughs> Video scheduler. All right. So it didn't like starting that test right away. Needed more of a needed more of a break to calm down. Chat's blowing up. <laughs> <clears throat> Linus have the Canadian winter for advantage temperatures. Tommy Crosby says, "Absolutely." I don't know how cool that warehouse is, but. If you could run it out in the snow, you'd have an advantage. It's sort of exotic cooling. <laughs> 80, 90, we're one point away. Uh, 63C, rip LTT, lol, XDDDD, mate, you got this. See ya, blat. Thank you. Disturbed Medic says, hey, Steve, early celebratory gifts for beating minus. One point away, but thank you anyway. We'll get there. Chat's going so, so many F's in chat right now. F, 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 F. Can't, can't, uh, can't script it better than that, though. Oh, Andrew just pointed out a $100 donation. That is a lot. I'll read it in a second. Thank you, though, in advance. Uh, hand me the air dust. Try to get another 40 points. Yeah, basically, spray it into the rads at this point. Would turning off the monitor improve the score? No, I don't think so. Uh, that was from Quick Shot. Previous one was from Motors, Motor, Motorsport. Alexi says, say I want to put four of those crazy titans in a loop with EKWB 560 rads. Is that a reasonable idea? What are you doing, I guess? That's the question. Um, if you're doing some kind of compute or deep learning thing that doesn't need to bridge them with NV length, then uh, I guess so. <laughs> so Better be making money off of it if you're spending that kind of money. That is 12 grand on Titan Vs. The guy who be says, "Can we see some more out of the box thermals?" Think you're seeing it right now. Uh, Bill on Chilo, something in Russian. <laughs> money bags. Hey, love your content. I've got an 8700K at 5.3 gigahertz, 1.43 volts. Is that voltage fine? That's a great frequency. Uh, cooling's fine. Don't want the voltage to degrade it too quickly. I, I, you're okay. Um, if you can bring it down, great, but I think you're okay. I don't know how that is for daily. We use voltages similar to that. Check your LSE. Make sure the LSE is not blowing it up or pushing it past what you think it is, because that matters. Um, what do you think about Peltier Tech Cooling from Hayden? We tried testing uh, a phase change cooler at some point. Phononic or something, I think was the name of it. It did not perform well. It was like a 92 millimeter cooler and it performed like other 92 millimeter coolers. So we've tried it, but uh, I would need something better than that. Let's see, $100, what, what was your message? Why can't I see it? Uh, okay, we'll get there, I guess. Oh, someone did say the last test did not crash. It went to results just as you hit the reset button for the previous one, I guess. Oops. Uh, Andrew Cruz, always prefer out of the house thermals. That's what we're using right now with the windows open. Dreyer Spider, Drearier Spider says, have you considered testing, I got that one, SSDs. Rave, $5, you can find auto-saved 3D mark results in the documents folder. Might want to check to see where that last run really completed. Okay, well, I mean, yeah, we'll see. If this one's better, then who cares? We also measure static pressure. This is related to the fan testing. We have ways to uh, sort of show that. But um, I'll talk about that more when it's time. We're going to be testing against various radiators and filters. Jonathan Brumfield, what is your thoughts on the Thermal Take Water 3.0 Performer AIOs? I'm not familiar with them. We have a big water. I don't think we have the one you're referring to. Uh, so, yeah, sorry, I don't know. Samuel Kaufman, ModMat backordered, hashtag RIPLTT. Thank you for backordering a ModMat at store.gamersnexus.net. Certainly appreciate it. It helps a lot. Uh, Kayo says, great video, hashtag rip LTT. P.S. These are uh, Brazilian rays. Don't check the exchange rate, <laughs> okay? <laughs> we got five of those. I don't know what the exchange rate is. 
M. Emley, $100, no message. Well, thank you, M. Emley. We, uh, that's, that's extremely generous of you. Uh, and it's absolutely appreciated. Hopefully, hopefully this bench heard all of those super chats and will put on a show. Because uh, if it doesn't, it's going out the window. Uh, Gear Seekers, anyone else notice Steve has legs from the H500P video? Yeah, I guess that's probably uh, one of the few where you see below the table. Can, Bazinga X, can you recommend a good barber? No. Why would you ask? Uh, unboosted, hashtag get the water bucket. Okay, how are we doing here? Couple seconds, I think. It needs to be 8092 or better. It needs to be better than 89. It needs to be 8093 or better. It was 8091 last time. Everyone, hold your breath. Come on. What is it? There we go. Boom. Okay. Within margin of error, we've beaten Linus Tech Tips. They're at 8092. We're at 8099. Might try and push that a bit harder, but uh, just just to solidify it for now until they go crazy. But I, I would like to at least solidify that. So cool. Uh, yeah, 8099. Let's go over the numbers here. Seven six seven six on the graphic score. Eleven seven eight five on the CPU score. And. Uh, Anything else we need to note here? Well, yeah, 8099 here. So let's validate if it will let me. I definitely need to take screenshots for hardware bot. There we go, valid score. That's what I want to see. Okay, how quickly does this website update? Time Spy Extreme, one graphics card. Did it update already? No. Either way, we're in here between them. 8099. I'm going to take a screenshot for hardware bot as well. And that's going to require opening a bunch of stuff. And then uh, then we'll go for the next score. <clears throat> chat, let's see what chat's saying. Hashtag rip LTT going crazy. Everyone tweet at Linus Tech, I think it is. And, and Linus G Sebastian. Tweet at those accounts. Hashtag rip LTT uh, something else. I don't know. Wrecked or something. <laughs> See, tell them to respond. Tell them come at me. I'd love to see them respond in, in the way only Linus and team could. And then we'll return fire and keep the friendly media battle going. Give me a second to open all this stuff. And I, I'm going to go for five. We're, we'll push for a little longer. Go for five. We're not too far. And, uh, and see how that goes. Otherwise, we can always come back and do another stream and push for five. Need main board, speed, memory, CPU, main board. This is all the stuff for hardware bot, GPU Z. Okay, this thing down here somewhere. This here, all right. I think that's everything. All right. Cool, okay. So, I'm gonna push that GPU clock higher. We haven't had it crash yet. I, no, we had it crash once from GPU. Let's push it a little higher and see what it does. Especially now that room temperature is a bit lower. So let's go, I don't remember what the increments are on this thing. What was this, 75? It's normally like 25 megahertz increments, but let's see if like 115 does it for us. How about, how about this? What's the minimum increment on this? I think that's 25 also, but we'll see. No, nope, that worked. Okay, so 85, 115. Let's see if that crashes instantly or not. And uh, disconnect this. No, I'll leave it connected. Okay, run. Okay, let's see if we can get five. Have you done the shunt mod yet? Yes, it is on there presently. It's already on there. Uh, okay, so we're going for five now. I thought it just crashed. <laughs> Going for five. I don't know if we'll get it. I'm happy with six. Be happier with five. 
Okay. But Zynga, and I got that one. Get the water bucket, got that one. Philips C, 1600X at 3.8 gigahertz, 1.263 volts. AB350N, H60 AIO hitting 72C and PUBG. Thoughts on those temps. Is that T die or is that T control? For Ryzen, there's two temperature numbers. There's T die and there's T control. T control has a temperature offset. It will artificially increase the number that's reported to you. T die is the one that you want. That's more or less the real temperature. And uh, let's see. I'm, my phone's getting blown up. Uh, that's that's the temperature you want to look for. <laughs> EVGA's YouTube channel apparently popped into the chat earlier. Patrick says was moderating. Team EVGA posted in chat hashtag LN2. If you're still there, Jacob, Kingpin, Tin, any of you, I invite you to visit us, uh, BYO LN2, and we'll do it. Not not really sure what the parameters are for getting that through TSA, but. Uh, I'll bail you out. Uh, seriously though, bring it with you. I'll do something. <laughs> or or I'll get some in and you guys come out. We'll do it. Uh, all right. Other messages. Bill Onchalo, congrats, GN team. Had fun watching the stream. Thank you very much. Took us a while, but we got there. Uh, Waffle Fur, did LTT get that score when he took a wall AC unit <laughs> and shoved it in a cooler? Did it help? Uh, lots of congratulations messages. Lord Dreyer, Ed Novak, 20 bucks. Thank you very much. Adam says, should someone do a claymation, someone should do a claymation celebrity death match a la MTV with Steve and Linus. Congrats on the win. Uh, MXCA909. We're still stable over here. Cool. Uh, said, great work. Thank you. Troy Leonard, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Great job, Steve. Have an ice cold beer. Hashtag rip LTT. Okay, so if we're trying to go for five, and I think we're going to stop there, 8138 is the score to beat. Let me check what their uh, CPU scores are and things like that. That is by Zerve, who submitted from the U.S. Their C we're, we're way past their CPU score. They're at 10746, so we're good there. Their GPU score is 7800, quite a bit higher. We'll see how this does. Maybe. Uh, Daniel... Napolitano says, did you take the sticker off the CPU? <laughs> Is that a reference to the when didn't did Linus leave the sticker on the cold plate? I think he did. Someone did. Maybe it wasn't him. Oh, it was Jay, right? Is that Jay? We did take the sticker off. Rip LTT, here's some celebratory tacos. Uh, okay, so so uh from the donations tonight, after this, coffee, tacos, fried chicken times two. There's something else too. Beer. Beer. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for, for dinner, I guess. Uh, will Linus drop the gauntlet like he does hardware? Oh. That was a good one. Well served. I hope so. Probably. Okay. Kind of holding my breath on this one. We'll see how close we get to number five. That's the number we're going for now. <laughs> uh, Christopher Donald, 10 bucks. Thank you very much for the super chat donation. Christopher, can you please talk about thermal results, Fuji Poly pads on the VRM? I'm the one who's been asking you. Yeah, uh, we're working on it. I actually bought a ton of thermal pads. We'll get there. Dang, that was a big jump. I wasn't even trying to sandbag. What is that? 8138 is what we were trying to beat. We just did 8215 by accident. Uh, okay, cool. So we're number five now. Why are they saying 3D Mark crashed? No, it made it. I think it made it. Oh, 3D Mark site's down. Is it really? Uh, I think it is down. Hopefully we can still validate. I don't know how that happened. Okay, well, anyway, we're certainly not driving. Oh, well, maybe we are. I don't know. I, I wouldn't think we're driving enough traffic to do that, but maybe we are. Uh, okay, so anyway, let's show the, let's show the screen because the site's down. Sorry. <laughs> um, so hopefully you guys can see this okay. I think their site's down. It's still spinning for me. So uh, this is not updated. 
we were 11th when we started today at 76.88. And then we placed a score of 80.91, which put us here. Linus was 80.92. Uh, with the help of Buildzoid and also margin of error, we ended up at 80.99, which would put us in here. Not updated yet. Zerv is number five, 8138. Uh, we beat Zerv's CPU score, but at the time, not the GPU score. And now I, th I think we're very close to the GPU score. I don't think we're ahead of it. We're at 7800 GPU, 11769 CPU. So we passed this. We're at 8215, which is pretty close to four. Let's see what four's results are. Oh, it's site back up, I just realized. I guess the site's back up. Okay, cool. So, uh, okay. Scores. I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. 7791, 12589. So they've, who is this even? This person has a lot on us in CPU score. Gunslinger. But what was the GPU score? 7791. Maybe we can make it up in GPU. We haven't found the limit yet. So 8215. Let's try and validate this online. Come on. Did it validate? Yes. Okay, we validated. Uh, excuse me for a moment while I open up a thousand CPUZ tabs for hardware bot. And then we're going to try and beat Gunslinger, who is number four, and presently has 8263. We're at 8215. I don't know how much headroom we have left. Okay, I'm just opening a ton of these for, uh, for Hardware Bot where we'll submit our scores. And then we're also validated on 3D Mark's website where Linus validated. What I'd love to see is, is some more media getting into this because it's a lot of fun. And I think uh, media presence in the OC space would do a lot of good for the overclocking scene and it's good for viewers. So I'd, I'd love to see more of that, but okay, let's get our screenshot. Okay, it says invalid score. Did it not work? Compare result online. Why does it say invalid score? Score is not valid. Oh, result is already present. Okay, can't upload it twice. So it is valid. It just says we can't upload it twice. So we're good there. Uh, okay, let's see if we have anything left in this GPU before it starts crashing, driver crashing, and blue screening. 125, I don't know if 90 will even apply, or if that's too small of an increment. 931 did not apply. Let's just leave it there and see what that does. Well, you know what, no, let's, let's save everyone some time. Let's try 100, I think we're gonna crash. But we'll try 100 there, I'm pretty sure we'll crash here. And 125 on the core. Okay, see if it crashes instantly or not. I'm gonna bring chat back up. So we're going for number five at this time, or no, number four, we took five. Took five, I don't think the site's updated yet, but we should have five. Okay, wobble wobble, yeah, sorry. All right. Uh, Mr. Giggs. Have you used a Fractal Node 804 case? Thoughts? I have not. I've not used it. We are doing some mini ITX stuff, though. I think most of it just came in. Hasn't crashed yet. We'll see. Graphics 2 is normally where it fails for me. Which is going to be the next one. Hashtag Steve2020. Uh, $2. Thank you. David Wooten, $2. Much appreciated. Uh, I have a lot to catch up on here. Thank you for the super chats, everyone. Uh, Lure Dryer at Hardware Unboxed. Nice to see you in here. Welcome, uh, Hardware Unboxed Steve. Gargoyle named Lexington. My mom likes your hair. Appreciate it. Philip C. Two British pounds. 72 degrees Celsius. And a VRM hit 76 due to the mini RVZ01E. If, you're in a, if this is related to the question about thermals earlier, RVZ... Uh, 01E, is that, that's the small case. If you're at 72 and 76, I'd be pretty happy with that. Assuming, assuming your question's the one I was talking about earlier, uh, that I was asking about over, uh, thermals for an overclock. Because that's a tiny case, if I remember correctly. 
Uh, Two dollars, Mohammed. Probably the only viewer from Algeria. Hashtag GN Multinational. You might be. And we appreciate your presence. It looks like this will not pass. So we can bring down HBM and see if the core will hold. I'm not positive which one caused the crash. But I do want to go for four while we're so close. We're stable at 80. Let's put that at 80. Leave the core at 125. See if that works. Okay, it's still cooling down. The coolant's getting warm now, so uh, we'll see. We'll see how it does. Every couple degrees, if you're not familiar with Pascal and Volta, every couple degrees matters. It's like five degree increments, you gain or lose clocks. Uh, towards the bottom end of the scale, you're talking like 12 megahertz at a time, but 84 degrees is a big thermal hit that drops your clocks heavily. 60 degrees is a big barrier that also impacts your clocks heavily. If you get down to like 59 and below, you're boosted over. If you're at 60 and above, it's how Boost 3.0 works. And it keeps going down pretty far. I think it might be as low as 13, 12 or 13 degrees, something like that. Uh, Brent Lewis, well done, $20. Thank you, Brent, appreciate it. Peter Iyer, can you show the autographed GN Matt might pick one up? We can get a photo of one. I. I need them to come in, the new round to come in. We did some last time. Uh, I need the next round to come in to sign them, though. But, yeah, we can do a photo. Uh, okay. So, too much. Too much for it. So, 115, we were stable. I don't know. We might... Let's, let's go back to 115. And let's go up to 100 and see if that's stable. Maybe it's the, cl the core that's tripping us. And if not, we can try some stuff with the CPU, and then we'll call it quits. If that doesn't work, I'm still plenty happy with slot number five for now. You put liquid in the fridge and pour it in. We could have condensation issues. <laughs> no, yeah, Kanepin flew out for Jay's video. It would be awesome for Ilya to do the same for you. Ilya, I believe they're referring to Tin, as he's known. He's, uh, he's one of the engineers at EVGA. He works in, I think, the same lab as Kingpin. We've been in that lab. It's really cool. Um, fun trivia, or fun fact, I guess. The lab Kingpin works out of, it has, so it's got the huge LN2 tanks, as you'd expect. It's also got kind of a loop hooked up. So uh, basically, the if I remember correctly, the LN2 comes straight out of the tank, goes to the component, and it's not really like an open loop or a closed loop cooler it looks like one though so it visually it looks like a closed loop liquid nitrogen cooler it's really damn cool um they have a they have a good test setup as you'd expect but uh yeah we'll be out there again when we're in taiwan for computex uh later this year mm, end of may june i think first week of june we'll be there probably visit evga okay Justin Parrish, phase change refrigeration and LN2 from Linus. Yeah, we'll see. That'd be what I'd expect from Bill Lanchalo, do you read any books? I've read Stephen King not in a long time. Uh, most recently, basically, GPU architecture book. Gonzo's twin. Here's $10. Here's some batter and blood for the celebratory breakfast tomorrow. Have some pancakes and the blood of your enemies, a.k.a. maple syrup, on me. <laughs> Thank you. Is, is maple syrup a euphemism for Linus here because he's Canadian? Or uh, Total wind-up, $2. Thoughts on NVIDIA GDX? GDX. What, RTX? GDX. What is DG? Oh, DGX, maybe. DGX, the research thing? Uh, I don't have many thoughts on it. It's way out of my coverage spectrum. I'm not really qualified to talk about it. If I remember correctly, it's just a big like cloud computing box of some kind. No thoughts at all on that. Sorry. Uh, Buildzoid's messaging me. Gunslinger. Okay, Gunslinger's score. Oh, hardware bot. There you go. Okay. Thoughts on changes. Asking Buildzoid. <clears throat> he ran on LN2 apparently, so that's part of why he's destroying our score uh, in the CPU department. Looks like it's passing. HPM's higher this time. Hopefully that actually matters with this benchmark. I don't remember anymore. It mattered with Firestrike. Sharkums and friends. 
Five dollars. Well done, Sir Steve. Thank you, Sharkums. I think Sharkums has a stream coming up on like the 24th or something. We've retweeted it a few times. I gave him a couple of, uh, of like GN basically shirts, swag stuff to give away on a stream. I think that's on the 24th. Search for Sharkums on Twitter if you want to win one of the GN things I gave him. Uh, Brandon, have you seen the Ghost S1 Modular MITX case? I have not. Let's look that up. Ghost S1 Modular MITX case. CP is running, so we made it past the hard part. Ghost S1. That looks very compact. That's crazy. We, I don't know. I can try and get in touch with them. It's like barely taller than a Red Bull can, apparently, based on their photos. Uh, Justin Murphy, spray with coolers and duster turned upside down. No, no I'm not going to do that. Thermals aren't limiting us right now. Skills limiting us, and so is the GPU. Skills limiting us on the CPU and the memory. But I've got Buildzoid helping a bit at this point. Okay, what is it? I'm gonna move this over to the left. Dang, 8222. All that for like eight points, seven points. 8222 is pretty good. So Gunslinger's got us beat right now. Buildzoid says, I think he's doing some calculations. In order to beat Gunslinger and take fourth, we would need a 7850 GPU score. We're 50 points away from that. And an 11,800 CPU score. That's what we would need. So we're 44 points away on the GPU. And we're 26 points away on the CPU. Or no, not, not, the, not even. Uh, 16. 16 points away on the CPU. So, I don't know. We try and push to 49. Let's do that, I guess, before we give up. Let's push to 49 on the uh, on two cores, see what that does for us. And then we can try a little bit more on the GPU. My restart button has broken, thank you, Windows. I didn't use command prompt to shut down. All right, I think we're plugging in a battery on the camera too. Uh, not too much longer on this, guys, but I do want to see if we can get to that, that last slot. Liquid Oxygen OC. Zach B, thank you for the $2. Odom Bones 94, uh, did I miss it? No, okay. How does the mat handle snags like cat claws? She hasn't, Snowflake hasn't tried to scratch it up, surprisingly. Cats destroy friggin' everything they touch, though, so I'm not gonna guarantee my mat against, a, against cats. It's a losing battle. Um, it holds up very well to screwdrivers. That's part of what we invested uh, our newer development efforts on, was making sure it can hold up to scratches. Durability is much better than on our original sample, which is the one that I have, but not the one that's shipping. So original sample was very vibrant, but not very durable. Um, we've improved the durability a lot. And for this next run, we're working on improving the vibrance as well, uh, which we've done some tricks like changing the background to black, which increase, brings out the contrast a bit, uh, following feedback from some of the early adopters. Thank you to those of you who provided that. And um, yeah, so it holds up very well now and the, uh, actually always for retail samples. And the contrast should be better for the next round, which is great. We're pretty happy with it already, but uh, working on improving it as we go because this is our first real product. Okay, 3D Mark. And if you're curious about it, I'll say it again, store.gamersnexus.net. The mod mat is what I was just talking about. Okay, so. I pushed for 49 on two of the cores. We're just going to run the CPU test and see if it crashes. And we're at 100 here. We're at 115 here. We might be able to do 125 on the HBM. See if it crashes and see if it overheats. Just CPU. 
So we're going for number four. We already passed Linus, if you're just getting here, or if you've forgotten. And uh, he was at 80.92. We passed that. We're at like 80... 82.15, 82.22, something like that. And now we're going for 82.63, which is Gunslinger's score. So that is, uh, that's the score to be 82.63. According to Buildzoid's calculations from actually hardcore overclocking, we need a 78.50 GPU score and 11,800 CPU score. And he's reminding me that GPU score is way, way more important than CPU for time is by extremes. So that's where we really need to make up ground if we're gonna actually get there. Without chilling it or something, I don't know. We're, we're kinda at the max, but let's just see if we can pull something out of the CPU for, uh, for that 7800 that we need. We're at 49 on two, or on four of the cores, I think. Four, yeah, something like that. Okay, chat, what's chat saying? Uh, Bill and Chalo, two dollars. We're building something great. Yes, we are. Time spy scores. Trey Coleman, MSI ABE unlock voltage slider to gain access to higher clock speed bins. You can utilize it due to the card being shunt modded. I mean, I'll try it. The in my experience, the voltage slider doesn't actually do anything, but I'll certainly give it a shot. So that wasn't stable. Let's fix that first. I'll give your suggestion a shot. Uh, vo the voltage slider itself is really just like a placebo, but I maybe you're, I think you're talking about different bins though, so that might be different. So we need to drop those clocks back down a bit. Okay, let's go 48, 48, leave those alone, because it was semi-stable. Uh, Wishbone, $2. Asus Strix AMD FreeSync 2 monitors out yet. I actually don't know. I haven't heard of FreeSync 2 very much since uh, CES 2017, I think. Gage Lindell says, get number four and I'll buy a mod mat. <laughs> we'll try. Uh, Swain Life Away, is that a Rise Against reference? Says, will multi-die GPUs come to pro professional or consumer first? I don't know. Navi's doing it soon. So I, I, I'm not sure, genuinely. I would assume professional use, but um, I would think some kind of like, no, the V100's not multi-die. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, my money would be on Navi being one of the first to market, but we'll see what Nvidia has up its sleeve. Okay. So first, Let's do a validation of if uh, if the previous if the new settings are stable for 49 for the first two cores, and then I'm going to save this profile this time. Okay, you know what? we're going to do the I will do that next. We'll do that voltage unlock thing next. See if that bin is actually going to help or if it's if it matters at all. I think we're pretty close to our limits here, though. 8263 Gunslinger, a real overclocker in this class, unlike Linus and myself. So we're up against heavyweights now. I think he used LN2 on a 7980 XE and had it over 5 gigahertz. <sighs> All right. So we have Bob Zeri, one dollar. Thank you, Bob. Uh, okay. <laughs> Bill Onchalo, two dollars. Just joined the stream. What CPU are you running? You know, Bill, when you use the same username to post that question about five times, uh, we, we catch on. Was it not stable? Dang. Um, 79, it's a 7980XE. I actually haven't managed to change it uh, via quantum teleportation. So we're going to drop that back down. We'll push GPU up a bit. Uh, let's see. Hemal Patel. <laughs> Hemal Patel, uh, 20 bucks. Hey, Steve, you emailed me when I drunk bought two mod mats by accident. Use this money to buy some ice and chill those rads. You got this. Thank you. Yeah, I saw the second order come in shortly after the first order. 
and uh, we ended up changing it to just one mat because apparently Drunk purchased the second one. And I, I caught it and was like, that's different behavior. But we do appreciate the $20. Okay. All right, I think we're getting towards the last try here. Just going to push that GPU, see what it does. Uh, Skylar Wallace, $5. Speaking of Rise Against, what music do you listen to? Uh, Rise Against, Bad Religion, Parkway Drive, uh, Trivium, uh, what else? What other, what other metal stuff? There's so much. Um, Maiden occasionally, Protest the Hero is really good. Uh, it's a couple of BT Bam's pretty good. Opath's good. Would be most of it, I guess. Rise Against as well. Some rap, depending on uh, how hard I'm trying to destroy Linus's score in 3D Mark. All right, Afterburner. Hilltop hoods are good. Bliss and Asso good. Pac. Okay. So, what was that setting we were looking for? Let me drag this over here so I can see it. It's the unlock voltage. Doesn't do anything, but we'll do it anyway. I mean, it might it might do bin stuff, but uh, the actual slider is basically placebo. Okay. Let's just try 125 here one more time. I don't think we're going to get this one. What I'll do separately after the stream is probably submit a bunch of scores for Fire Strike and stuff too on the stable settings we have. Uh, Alexander Styles, $5. You should check out The Deer Hunters Act 4 and Coheed's Good Apollo Volume 1 if you haven't. I actually haven't heard them already. I will do that. Someone else just told me to check out Tooth Grinder earlier. Uh, CJ Hansen, hashtag give it all. And yes, that is a reference. Yes, that is a great reference. That's the first Rise Against song I heard. Uh, Lure Dryer, I'm glad you don't play metal on here, not my music genre. Okay, thank you for the uh, 50 Norwegian. PlanetVampire.com. Why does Steve use Pantheon when he already has such finesse? The, the puns. The puns. Is it going to be stable? I think it crashed on graphics too last time. Food after this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we can go to the only place that's open. <clears throat> uh, how about industrial? Cam, FDM, Skinny Puppy, Frontline Assembly. I actually don't. Uh, not because I don't like it, just because I, I don't really venture over there. Um, AFI I used to listen to like every day. I still like AFI. I've seen them live a lot. And uh, Rise Against I've seen live a lot. Linkin Park I saw live a couple times. AFI, they're, what the hell is their album name? Um, shoot, I forget what it is. They, they kind of went industrial on one of their recent, not, their, not the Blood album, but the one before that. Uh, burials. Yeah, they kind of went industrial a little bit, but no, not really, to answer your question. Okay. Did it crash? I think it crashed. Same spot. All right, I think that's probably all we're going to push it for now. So, what I'll do next is, you know, while we're, I guess this won't take long, we'll just run uh, the stable settings we have. Hopefully, it's still stable. I don't know. Hopefully, it's stable. I guess it's a bit different with Fire Strike, isn't it? But let's just do a time spy run, submit that non-extreme and then we'll do fire strike submit that fire strike extreme and maybe i'll tune them off camera later but i think that'll get us some scores on the database for now bill on two dollars buy some mcdonald's with this huge donation <laughs> thank you uh, well so now now just let's just recap let's recap the stream do donations which we very much appreciate uh how long have we been streaming do you know Three hours or something? It's 10.06. No, two and a half hours? Either way, uh, something like two and a half hours. Over that period, we've gotten donations for um, fried chicken, for coffee, for beer, for McDonald's. 
tacos. <laughs> Thank you, though. I really appreciate it. Uh, Lord Dryer, I think this will be my last one. Think you can look. Think you can try to look up how much you've made in total on the stream before ending. PS, great work. That I don't know that I get to see that until the stream ends. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't see anything on here. It's a, it's. I mean, it's a decent amount. Like it, it definitely. Here's the thing. Streaming's a big toss up because if if you don't get the uh, views and either indirect revenue, which would be things like merch sales, uh, or direct revenue, which would be things like super chat, what you're doing, they don't tend, this one notwithstanding, don't tend to get as many views as the normal videos. So ad revenue is going to be lower. Uh, placed ads will be, uh, will serve fewer views. So to really make it work, we need uh, to, to get something out of the stream from a a brand perspective, so like establishing that, hey, that you can come here and see a different kind of stream, do some overclocking, stuff like that. Uh, and also bring in hopefully some additional revenue through things like Patreon, uh, Store, Super Chat. I don't know what we've gotten, but um, it's, it looks like it's, it's made up for the fact that streaming is expensive in terms of uh, what we could do instead. Not expensive in terms of equipment, because it's mostly the same equipment. The setup expense is a couple hours, not too bad. Well, this one took a bit more. Uh, but the, the, the fact that over the course of a stream plus setup, we could film one or two other videos, that's where you factor in the, the business side of things. So yeah, it, it, it helps, appreciate it. Um, absolutely appreciate you, especially Laura Dryer the whole time. Looks like it's going through, so that's time spy, not extreme. I don't know, we might be able to push GPU higher, but I'm not gonna bother at this point. We're just gonna submit the score as it is. Time Spy will behave differently than Extreme. I don't even remember if we're at 4.9 on two cores anymore. I've kind of lost track. Uh, okay. Oh, answer that and stay fashionable. Good reference. That's from Supervillain. <laughs> uh, next to Mustangs by Matt. $2 Mousetrap for the one. Mousetrap. Is that a par Parks and Rec, right? Parks and Rec reference. Hammer slap, five dollars. I see nineteen thumbs down. Isn't that exactly how many employees Linus has? Pretty damn close. Think you're onto something. <laughs> Let's get some heavy music fans in the chat. Harley Clark, thank you. Uh, Zan Cruz, I like Turtles. It's one of my favorite bands, actually. Abuse Nab, use five dollars. Use us to get some salad. Stay healthy. Okay. So, thing about staying healthy is I don't think after. After you pile all the things you've all told us to eat tonight, you put a salad on top of it. I don't think that's how staying healthy works, but I will certainly try it. So we're trying to get everyone, anyone who's trickled in or out. Uh, we're at 82.22 for Time Spy Extreme. We've, we passed Linus a long time ago. We passed Zerv, I think. I'm not familiar with Zerv. They may well pass us. Um, I don't know if our score is updated yet. 8222, I think is what it was. And uh, we tried to pass Gunslinger briefly. Can't quite do it. We'll need more tuning or different parts. So we'll leave it there for Time Spy Extreme. This is Time Spy Normal, uh, non-extreme, just to place a score with it. And we'll do Fire Strike and then close it out. Uh, tech Soup. Jiggle the handle, turn it up to 11. Thank you for the $2. Yoni, Benny, Oni, buy a song with this. You hear All That Remains. I have heard All That Remains. What did I hear by them? I don't remember what I listened to by them. Oh, they just cycled through in my uh, YouTube like recommended thing once. I think that's where I saw All That Remains. I haven't really listened to them, to be honest. Dominic Pham, Last Hurrah. Yeah, basically. Uh, CJ Hansen. 499, give it all is my fave, all time fave, rock on. Give it all is great. Uh, John Guy, $20, smash that, mucho love. We already, we already smashed Linus, I think. He'll, he'll get back to us, though. He'll throw some LN2 on it or something. Uh, Zizix Wolf, make LTT cry like an anime fan on prom night. Ouch. Uh, $2 cracked. D Dillmill. 
use 1093 voltage frequency point to OC. I get what you're saying. I I think we're probably a bit past that point in terms of in terms of uh, like tiredness and things like that. I don't even know how this score compares at this point, but let's take a look. No, we're not connected to the internet. That would help. So I don't know where we're gonna place on this one. Come on. Come on. All right, let me just pull it up on the other machine. So we're looking at time spy, not extreme, for one GPU. Oh, there it goes, okay. One GPU, time spy, normal. The site is going so slow. 3D Mark's crazy slow right now. Still loading, guys. I don't know how we actually compare right now. Result is hidden, I'm guessing, because their website seems to be down. That's annoying. Okay. <clears throat> uh, time Spy LTT. All right, save that one. Invalid score, probably because it couldn't submit. Oh, already exists. Okay, so it's already up, apparently. 3 mark website, still not responding. Stop breaking 3 mark. <laughs> okay, uh, so 15494. If anyone can get the 3 mark result, that, wait, that's going to cause a problem. If anyone can get the 3 mark results page to load, the Hall of Fame page, sorry. Click on Time Spy, not Extreme, and then click on 1X. And then tell me... Where 15494 lands on that chart? Uh, because I can't get their site to load anymore. And I don't think what I just said will help it. Anyway, we got that one. I saved it for now. Not like we can't do it again later. Let's just run a uh, Fire Strike Extreme, and then I'll, I'll stop it there. If we want to do others, we'll do them off camera. So that'll be the last one. If anyone can get it to load, let me know. <clears throat> All right, so super chats. Joseph Khan, if you had to guess, will the 1180 or whatever they call it be as fast as a Titan V? I, maybe, a, mm, I don't know, maybe a TI. I don't think so. Um, fourth, that doesn't sound right. Fourth spot, multiple people, no, one person said fourth. Is that really true? It'd be nice if I could load their website. Um, is the ModMat compatible as a mouse pad? So on the store page for the ModMat, technically it says not intended for use as a mouse pad. It's meant as a service for modding components. It's anti-static, costs more as a result than a mouse pad would. Uh, the material has sort of a rougher texture to it, it's, I would put it between a smooth mouse surface and like the rough aluminum side of a razor mat, aluminum mat. Uh, so it's in between those in terms of roughness. I've been using it as a mouse pad this whole time. It's not intended to be used that way. Um, if you are highly sensitive and really want smooth surfaces, then no, buy a mouse pad. Uh, if you're okay with a bit of texture, then it seems to work fine for these. I'm not a competitive esports player though, so I, I can't speak to the high end. Uh, but anyway, 1180, I don't think it'll, I, I don't know. What I can tell you, my guess for the next gaming generation is, and by guess, I mean, I'm, I'm almost 100% positive. Uh, NVIDIA, I'm fairly confident, is shifting some of its focus to, um, uh, to DirectX 12 and uh, Vulkan. We've been streaming for a while. I'm kind of losing words at this point. Uh, <clears throat> what am I looking for here? Shoot, um, I've been streaming way too long. Either way, DirectX 12 and Vulkan. Oh, um, out of order processing. So they're going that direction. Uh, more, more asynchronous compute, that's what I was looking for. Uh, asynchronous compute, DirectX 12 Vulkan will be part of the uh, more focused feature set of the next generation as I understand it today. The Titan V made large strides specifically in games like Sniper Elite 4 with asynchronous compute and with DirectX 12. It didn't make as big games in DirectX games. In DirectX 11, there's less to gain. Uh, NVIDIA's already optimized their DX11 drivers a lot, and their focus appears to be going more towards 
the asynchronous compute stuff. So I can't answer your question where the 1180 will, will fall. But in terms of predicting the focus of performance, I think you'll see less of an uptrend on DX11 and more of an uptrend in DX12 and Vulkan, specifically with asynchronous or out of order processing. That's what I think is going to happen next. And I, I am fairly confident in a lot of those things I just said. Uh, Sway is $5 for Pepto-Bismol after all of the food we're going to have to eat because of the stream. Validated because you're in our internet connection. Okay, so their site's still down. Uh, Firestrike Extreme, 18644. I don't know where that falls. I don't know if it'll even let us validate it. 18644, though, for the score. Uh, graphics, 18, 878. Physics, 36,000 combined, 10 to 30, 10,230. So that's where we are for that. Hayden, protest the hero is the shit. Yes, they are really good. More proggy, but really good. Okay, yeah, so we're gonna save this one too. I don't know what's up. <clears throat> LTT FS Extreme, okay. So I think that'll close out the benchmarks basically. <clears throat> I'll let this run while I, I close out the stream here, but let me read a couple more of these. Uh, Zalix. Revisited my OC on a 6850K at 4.4 at 1.41. Can't seem to get the voltage any lower. Suggestions for 4.4 and you can't get the voltage lower. Um, check your LLC settings. It's possible that you're putting in a number like 1.41, but if your LLC is not holding it actually at what you're telling it to hold it at and it's lower, you might have some more headroom there if you increase your LLC. Do it responsibly. Uh, Check the voltage as you increase LLC because it's possible that it'll it'll like blast the voltage too high. But just do a quick check and um, and see what that gets you. That would be my starting point. Is LLC. Uh, Lord Dreyer, Nor Norwegian Kroner is down today, so my 350 knock is only about $45 today. Blame Norwegian politicians. Sorry to hear. Uh, Bill Onchalo. What is that? Eggplant emoji. Seminole Chief, rip LTT hashtag slush falling from the sky in Winston. Yes, definitely rip LTT. We'll see what they respond with. <laughs> Wishbone, two bucks. Thank you. Your thoughts on Atari VCS and take apart, buy and take apart. We might. I, I saw the news announcement on it. I don't know much about it. Um, I need to ask Patrick. I know he had some thoughts on it. He, he was doing some work earlier for us. Sway is $10. Buy some shims for that table. I don't know what to do with the table. Uh, Tyler Witt, eight fifty. Love the vids. Keep them up. Thank you. What's that thing in the background with your logo? Uh, this. This is a side panel. Um, Iowa Power Revolt 2. It was one of our first ads we ever ran, I think, during CES of like, I don't know, maybe 2016, I want to say. Uh, the iBuy Power Revolt 2 Small Form Factor Gaming PC. I still remember it because I was like the first ad read I had to memorize to say I'll show. But they, um, I actually, I liked the case. It had a couple problems, but it was, uh, it was pretty good overall because they did only liquid coins, so thermals weren't as big of a concern. It was a brute force solution. But they just put like a vinyl wrap on the side panel. Um, the, the guy, uh, the PM basically did that by hand. So uh, we liked how it looked a lot, wanted to put it on display. It's been there a while. It needs to be dusted. Zeta, before you go, $2. Hey, before you go, I never caught what CPU you have. It's a, it's a 7980XE. Intel shills. Uh, Clint Kern, as promised, off to sign up for Patreon. Also, buy a mod mat. Need a new mouse pad. Lol, good job today. Thank you. I appreciate it a lot. Uh, we're looking at some mouse pads, by the way. But we have a lot of other things in progress right now. Okay, Firestrike, I think, just finished. So let me read through the last ones of these. Um, Tech Diode, Linus deployed his botnet against the 3D Mark site. Uh, donation to stream all the food you have to eat. I think, I think we're done with streaming for now. Thank you, though, Don Sell, uh, 1999. Thank you, appreciate it. Justin Adson, $5. Check out Circa Survive and their album On Letting Go. I will add that to my list with the others that. You all have told me to check out. Uh, okay, Fire Strike, 32,793. I'll save the score. GP score, 37,000. Physics score, 36,300 combined, 16,000. 
So let's just save this as LTT-FS, and then I will submit that once their website works again because either you guys or Linus's people broke it. I don't know. Someone broke the uh, the, the, the site. Uh, okay. I am not reading any more Super Chats after these two, just to be clear. Luis Gustavo, have you ever seen rainy days affecting the OC? I had problems in the past when trying to OC. Interesting. No, I haven't. Um, I don't know. Is it also warm on those days? Do you have like a high room ambient or something? HTC 148, say Lame's airbrush sucks. That's my business. Oh, okay. Uh, last one. Mavernox Rex, can't afford the mod mat. So here's a donation to your glorious channel. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you everyone for watching. It was a lot of fun. Uh, to recap, we beat Linus Tech Tips for now on the Time Spy Extreme charts. I think I said we're in fifth. And uh, we passed Zerv, I think. We're behind Gunslinger. We need to see what our scores look like for the others. Might need to optimize further for those. Perhaps another stream. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to us. Click the button below to get in-depth testing content. If you're not familiar with who we are, that's what we do. It's a lot of depth, a lot of detail, and a lot of charts. Uh, for benchmarking so that's that's kind of our thing please subscribe though patreon.com slash gamers nexus helps out directly store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of these mod mats they ship within the next two weeks and uh, the last one five basher thanks for all steven team thank you all for watching i'll see you all next time